Doves, Caught by the River on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Hello, Carl Pilkerson, and everything. <laughs> no, I'm gonna be honest with you. Go on. A little bit hungover, yeah. don't feel very well. Yeah. I don't know if I'm hungover or still a bit drunk, but I don't feel. You sound like you're still a bit drunk. Yeah, so what but then I'm worried about. You do every week, so. But okay, what I'm worried about is that the standard will slip. <laughs> It, yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. I'm not right on the ball. Um, and uh, the other thing is, I haven't had a, a lot of time to prepare the show today. <laughs> okay. So, I don't, and I, and I, I don't really, I, I don't feel, you know. 100%. Yeah. I haven't done the Carl. Right. Look. Have you finished that sentence? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't make me laugh because it, it hurts as well. Sure. And uh, the other, the other, there's another side effect to me being a little bit hungover and, and um, or, or drunk or whatever, right? is that I can be annoying. Right, yes, yes. Because I, just to amuse myself, I sort of like turn my body off a little bit and just poke and ah, uh, like that and annoy people and that. I want to, mm. I want to sort of like Well, climb. you do the physical equivalent of freewheeling. <laughs> yeah, don't yeah. You? You just I, let... sort of, uh, I sort of want to climb on Carl and go to sleep on him. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yes. They, they, they both annoy him and it'd be comfortable. Yes. yes. Which is... Uh, you know, it can be annoying. Uh, uh, quick, just a little thing, just to make this show a bit easier. If you'd put your hand up when you went, want one of us to speak, because it's not quite. I'm not quite sure when um, when the sentences are finished. The hands are up. Okay, good. So um, the hands are up. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. Okay. Are you going to just keep up the rest of the show, or no? Uh -huh. that, like, uh, Carl, do what you've what you. Huh? <laughs> good. All right. Do you want to? I mean, is there an excuse as to why you're a bit hungover? Too much drunk? wine. Okay. All Last right. night, yeah. Yeah. Good, good. Thanks okay. Because this is the only, I mean, this is the only work you've got to do all week, isn't it? <laughs> like, unless I'm very much mistaken, you don't have to do anything. You just uh, sit at home eating, eating cheese. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then occasionally you do a bit of sort of shadow boxing. <laughs> and that's exercise. <laughs> and then you sit, uh, sit and watch TV. Yeah. Is that roughly what you did this week? Yeah. Uh huh. So this is the only two hours you had to do anything for all week. This is the only you had to prepare for yeah, this. Yeah, but the, uh, who can plan a hangover? <laughs> right. You know, you'd think, uh, Carl, you said you had some stuff. Yeah. What have we got? <laughs> yeah, I, Carl, I, 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 love, I love the fact that, whereas I was a little bit slow, Carl there leapt into action <laughs> to keep this show afloat, keep the pace up. Go on. Right, well, uh, <laughs> Carl, are you hungover as well, or? <laughs> I'm, ju I'm just a bit annoyed because I'm with you. Do you know sure. what I mean? He yeah. hasn't got much to do all week. You're having a laugh. What? What angers me is I, I kind of hope that maybe I could have quite a long career in radio and I sort of feel like I'm, yeah. I don't know, the word sinking ship. <laughs> yeah. Those words spring to mind. But. Cause it feels like, I mean, Carl, you're, you're just a chancer anyway. You weren't even supposed to be on air and you, we've made you into something of a household name and that's cool. Household name. And Ricky's already a celebrity. He's got it stitched up. He's got corporates. He's got, yeah. you know, voiceover work. But I've got nothing. I'm running on empty. I've got, I, you know, yeah. I'm not, uh, nothing. I've got nothing. I'm sort of dependent a bit on this. Yeah. Financially. And Go on then. What and you, you two are sort of bringing it down, really. Right. Do you reckon I can get my own show, Carl? Carl. Yeah. Carl. Tell them what I did out there with a bit. No, Carl. Carl. Tell them how funny I was out there with a bit in that a minute ago. So anyway, record, come on, Carl, right? I'm bored of this. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> will we will we tease them with what we've got coming up next? Yeah, Carl, yeah, tease us after the next. Because I think we've already got them for yeah. two hours. Yeah, we've hooked <laughs> them. We've hooked them, Carl. Don't worry. This is textbook radio. Is it, what's this? Badly drawn boy. Yeah. Badly drawn boy. You were right. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Carl, you were saying what's coming up? Right, over the next two hours then, last week, uh, <sighs> was a bit of a mess. Don't be silly. So I've sorted it out. Uh, we'll be doing the same features. <laughs> right. <laughs> We've got, uh, I think that was the reason it was a mess, <laughs> if I was. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, You've tightened it, you tightened it, tightened it you tightened the ship. Tightened it up, and okay. also keeping people for longer. Okay. Right, so tell me, tell me your plans. What, what, what have you come up tell with? Tell me your ethos behind this then. Right. Right. Always show your workings, Carl. Always show your workings, Carl. Alright then, so, last week we started good sort of play on words that we had going. Go on. Um, the well-known film educating Rita. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's become, <laughs> thanks to Carl Pilkington's brain, <laughs> it's become- I've tweaked it a bit and now yeah. it's educating Ricky. Brilliant. Right? And that was a new feature we started last week, if you weren't listening, where I teach Ricky stuff. What did you teach me? Uh, taught, taught you about that little Chinese hairy kid. Yeah, you yeah. didn't teach me anything. You said there was a kid that was born that was slightly hairy and other Chinese people. I taught you where the saying chewing the fat came from. I enjoyed that. That was that. good. That, that was, was interesting. Good. And, uh... And a man who had a beard. Because he was man, being abducted uh, three yeah. days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, that was rubbish. <laughs> lest, that did, that, <laughs> lest we forget. That taught me more about you than about alien abduction. But what happened last week is... Go on. Uh, we sort of talked about it all in one go. 
And you can't- Where is this? Where you've done what? You've spread it out <laughs> over the show? Well, I spread it across the two hours, cos I always found that if you try to be taught too much in one go, you just can't take it in and it'll be wasted. <laughs> <laughs> so is that your experience of school? <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> they yeah. taught you in three minute bursts. Yeah, yeah and, and not every day. Yeah, every other when month. you felt like it. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do, right? Uh, so we've got educating Ricky coming up. That's educating Ricky stuff. across the two hours. Okay, look. And, and what I do is I've made little headlines again. And you decide which story you want to go All for of them. first. Well, give me the first yeah. headline. No, 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 not yet. We'll do that. In well, a bit. give me a teaser. Hang on a minute. I'm telling you what else. Oh, right? oh yeah. We've I'm also got. Uh, we've also got. We started it last week. Yeah. Rock, rock busters. Yeah. Oh yeah, that, that was a triumph. Yeah. yeah. I think we went wrong there. Why? By letting you do it, doing it on air. Uh, not thinking it through. Yeah. Bit of that. Okay, so what's the rules on Rockbusters? We're gonna do Rockbusters, okay. but, but you email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk when you know the answers, okay. right? And sort of round near the end of the show, right, yep. we'll give out the answers then. So if they think they know the answers, they've got to hang about. Rick, I should tell you now, um, I'm don't not, think- I'm, I'm not hanging about. <laughs> 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 don't think that, um, don't think that the listeners are gonna go away empty handed because uh, there's some cracking I was worried about that. <laughs> I can tell you where, like, don't worry because, um, Carl has sorted out some top quality prizes. Good, good. Um, first up, this is stuff that people can win and yeah. be excited about this. First up, it's a DVD of The Office. I don't oh. know how he got hold of it. I don't know how he got hold of it. Go Because they are like gold dust. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, um, this is the second gift. Now, bear in mind, this is, I, I don't know where he's rummaged that from. This is an XFM compilation album. Oh, He's yeah. managed to sort that out somehow. Excellent. I don't know how he's sorted that out. Yeah. There's another compilation album which has got, uh, some sort of, uh, indie type hits of yeah. these. But this oh, is but possibly- Have we got a film to give away? <laughs> well, I'm glad you've asked. What film though? Cause I know you're a big fan of DVDs. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, It's yeah, one yeah, of the yeah. big yeah. hot releases that everyone's <laughs> keen to get their hands yeah. on. Not like, arbitrary, is it? It's not the only one that- <laughs> this, this film title will not be an arbitrary film, will it? It'll be a big- Rick, I don't want you thinking that the film that Khan has sorted out here is that he's sourced for us. It's just an arbitrary thing that Go you- on. that you wouldn't get- you could buy for three ninety nine <laughs> in HMV. Yeah. Right, they're yeah. giving these away. Big, one of those big baskets. Exactly. I don't know who is phoning up to try and win this, okay. but you can be, uh, if lucky If this winning. is your favourite film, it's yours. Exactly. Okay. Um, but this is, yeah, this is the big, um, the big star prize. <laughs> this what is, is the one you're all playing for. It's Children of the Corn. <laughs> Stephen King's Children of the Corn. <laughs> it's a widescreen- a widescreen presentation on DVD. Uh, imagine getting that and going, excellent. <laughs> we can watch this now. But Rick, I mean, t uh, let me just run through some of the cast. Peter Horton. <laughs> 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 Pete Horton's in it, and, uh, uh, and that's uh, about I, it. I'll tell you what, I don't want to give it away if Hort is in it. <laughs> exactly. I'd never see his performance again. Is in it. Uh, also he, Linda Hamilton, I know you're all- Linda you're all Hamilton, fans of, she of plays, Hamilton. she plays a uh, piece of corn. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and um, I don't know what, I don't, I've not seen Children of the Corn, I could be wrong, but yeah, um, yeah. it but says, uh, it, it Carl, says when you were rooting around the office, why don't you just like throw <laughs> like a mouse mat and a pair of scissors and a pencil? Cause that yeah. is just arbitrary. That's that. an arbitrary selection that's, there. That's next week's stuff. <laughs> 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 but, uh, right. but also I should say we also have some, uh, this is a little bit more exciting, we've also got some tickets for, uh, DJ Shadow. Yeah. Who's performing at the Brixton Academy this he's evening. He's good, he's good uh, at DJing. So he's very good at DJing and plays scratching all the, and the Plays like. all the records that you want. <laughs> exactly. Plays all the records that you want. Don't, don't, uh, don't bring your own, he's got them all. He's <laughs> yeah. got them all. He's, I've seen him arrive, he's got two big bags of them. Yeah. So there's, uh, there's three pairs oh, of, uh, DJ Shadow tickets. We'll give those away later as well. Is don't, there any just, don't just start phoning arbitrarily now. No. We'll give those away in our own time. lemonade? <laughs> Sorry? I need some lemonade. Okay, well, while we sort out some lemonade, let's play a tune. <laughs> Come on, Carl, don't, what's wrong? Whoa, Carl! Ryan Adams from, uh, his new album, Demolition. Brilliant. A track called Nuclear. Yeah. I just, I just, um, found a new way of making it more exciting. When, it, when you're talking about something, I'll go, yeah, brilliant, <laughs> agreeing with you. Okay. Make it all interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> I can see that, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it's a really good album, that. Yeah. And, brilliant. um, yeah, it's brilliant. apparently just a collection of sort of demos and songs he had lying around. Oh, I wish I had that. Yeah. Um, you know we're giving away those DVDs and Children Look of the Corn. Look forward to that, Children of the Corn. I've got an interesting anecdote about, um, the, uh, The Office. Carl, we, we, me and Carl went out, right? Um, and, uh, with, um, me and Jane, Carl and Johnny and Gigi, wasn't it? Carl, no, I'm talking no. to you. Wasn't G it? No. Wasn't- uh, Gigi was Is it important to win? No. Okay. But we're walking down the street. Carl was there though and he can back me up on this. Um, we had a curry, we were walking back and uh, this little funny homeless fella, didn't he? Mm. He uh, oh I got to tell it before, before I go, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> he, 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 uh, he came up to me, right? And he recognised it. Uh, 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 talking's more difficult than you think. 
right? Um, and he came up to me and he went, he went, oh, he said, I've just nicked five of your DVDs from HMB. <laughs> and he shook my hand. He was so happy with it. And I went, right, excellent. He went, all I do is I just swing the bag over the top. Like that when, <laughs> when I'm going out, and he had a bag full of DVDs, didn't he? And what? he was he was so pleased to tell me that he'd <laughs> stolen that great. He said, that, he said they're going like hot cakes. Of <laughs> course they are. Yeah, <laughs> you're nicking them. <laughs> I know. We get paid yeah. for them, though, don't we? So we not the stolen ones, don't we? No. What do you mean? Did you sign them for him? <laughs> don't you, you idiot? <laughs> what? So um, he just nicked five. Yeah. Well, yeah. And you say he was homeless, was he? Well, I, I, I don't know, maybe. No. Surely, how would he have seen the show? He would just walk past Curry's one, one, one Dixon's. morning. Dixon's. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the Teddy idea. Seen a trailer for it, thought, hmm, interesting. I don't know if he was homeless. I, did, I didn't go into his home sure. life. He shook his hand, though, and... But he's... He, he made Carl look smart, do you know what I mean? Mm. Mm. So, uh... <laughs> but he wasn't, he wasn't Northern, was he? No, he was like, um, do you know in the, in the Thrash show with Paul Whitehouse, when he did that character, that shady character? Yes. The spit of that, you know, was like it? a ponytail, t-shirt on, a bit too big for him, and just the movement and everything, really like a, you know, a cockney, little cheeky chap type yeah, person. Yeah, a little cockney cheeky chap, yeah. And, uh, yeah, he just said, oh, he said, oh, it's you. He said, uh, yeah. you got your DVDs, got six of them from HMV, going like hot cakes they are. And then if he went whistling. Yeah. Well chuffed with himself. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Going like hotcakes. What, what, what's he gonna do with them then? Probably sell them. Yep. How does he f sell them? Where does he sell them? Does he go up to people and go, do you want an office DVD? They're not nicked. <laughs> yeah, four quid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Are oh. these stolen? No. No, 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 no. They've still got the tags on them. Well, yeah. it's like those people who, um, you're, you're those cab drivers that you'll meet at sort of three in the morning who've just got a car. Yeah. And just went out with a car. Yeah. And just, I'll, I'll, I'll pick people up and charge them. Yeah. I got in one once, I said to him, uh, the guy just pulled up, I said, uh, he said, I was in like, uh, East London, I'm going back to, uh, North London. I said, uh, yeah, going to, uh, Swiss Cottage. He went, sure, hop in. <laughs> we set off. He went, do you know the way? <laughs> I said, well, not really, no. I, th I thought you'd know the way. You're in a cabbie, aren't you? He went, no, I don't really know the way there. I, don't. I, said, I said, have you got an A to Z? He went, no. I thought, well, if you're gonna go out just on the, you know, just winging it as a cab driver, yeah. two things, take a map and a torch. He didn't have yeah. either. He said, uh, well, I'll probably get to Camden. I said, right, I'll direct you from there. Drove on for about five minutes, making conversation. About five minutes later, he went, do you know the way to Camden? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you knew the way to Camden. I don't really know the way. I thought I did. <laughs> oh. It was loot. I mean, let I, me I, out. You know, Four yeah, quid. Exactly. <laughs> and that's, I, I can't, I don't know who's got that sort of time on their hands that they just think, it's three in the morning, I'm, I'm at a loose end. Mm. I think I'll go out doing a bit of cabbing. Wow. Well. Yeah. Uh because -huh. your dad was a cabbie, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, yeah. Couldn't stand it, but it's, it's good money. He was a prefer- he wasn't like a chancer, though. Black what was- Black What was he- what was he doing when he put that little Forrest Gump in a- in a weedy bin? That was, uh, that was part of the cab company thing. They had to do, like, a charity event once a year, and he did it one year. Never asked him again. Tell the story again, said, I No, I'd rather not, cause Why? we got- cause we got a few, sort of, uh, complaints about it. Why? Why do you get complaints about it? Because it's because he put a kid in a bin and it's not the thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> so. But we could use it as a sort of sobering lesson for people. <laughs> yeah, tell it like a, tell it like a, you know, don't, yeah. you shouldn't do it. No, it's, it's, I, yeah, but that's how I did it last time, but people still didn't like it. All the stuff I tell you, I don't, you know, we don't take the mickey out of people on purpose. No. We, it's real life, innit? And mm. that goes on in life. Yeah. I, I was saying that in hospital, though. Do you know I was in hospital? Yeah. You know, he did some jokes about old people and that. And he said, at the end of the day, if something makes you laugh, it's funny. Mm. And if it makes you laugh, you can't help laughing, can you? Do you True know what enough. I mean? So, what are you meant to do? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. laughing's good for you. Yeah. So, even But being laughed at isn't as good for you, is it? No, but there's probably more people laughing at one person, so if you balance it out, <laughs> there's only one person who's upset and there's a bunch of people laughing. <laughs> so, it's, it's- That's genius! Give me an example of that, give me an example. Well, for instance, Carl Pilkington as he talks and the people listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, give me an example of like, so, uh, it, you know. I can't, well, I can't because again, that's what I'm saying, I can't tell you the story. Because yeah. there might be someone out there who, this person might even be listening and think, I forgot about that and you brought it all back to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I prefer to leave it, but I think people know- Why did he put him in the bin in the first place? Because he was getting out of hand. What was he doing though? You see, I can't explain- You can't, don't be silly! I prefer to- to leave it, honestly. What, what, what was he doing? Was he annoying him? He was annoying me dad and the other people in the cab. Right. And he thought, how can I deal with this mm -hmm. before it gets too out of hand? Yeah. He pulled over and put the lad in a wheelie bin. <laughs>
I'm gonna pay. So we'll, we'll leave that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Right. How old was the kid? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure, but I mean, it was a trip to sort of Blackpool, so <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> Do you think it was one of the rides? Seventeen. This is yeah. rubbish. Seventeen. Yeah. Oh, he's quite an old lad then. So no, a big lad. Yeah. Well, let's let's. Uh, did he pick him up? He picks him up and put him in a wheelie bin. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the way back, he got him back again. He said, "Right, you won't do that again." On the way back, yeah, he left him there for a bit. He left him there. What they went to Blackpool yeah. and he left the kid in the wheelie bin. Yeah. Did but, he? Yeah. What was the kid in the wheelie bin when he drove back? Yeah. Did he not get out? No, because how do you get out? It's tricky, isn't it? And <laughs> he wasn't a normal kid, was he? Let's let's leave it. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't a normal kid. Right, right then. So uh... is your father in prison? <laughs> Oh, I think he should be. Can we oh. put a song on? Yeah, go on then. Be there. Come back around. XFM. 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkerton. I asked Carl in the week, right, what animal would he never trust? <laughs> Even if he, he got to know it and it was a pet and everything, what animal would he never trust? What was it? Was this, uh, a wasp? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Why wouldn't you trust a wasp, Carl? I just think that, uh um, shifty? All, all other animals, if you get them at an early age, <laughs> you can sort of <laughs> make them like you. You can train them. A wasp. Nothing. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you- do you think there's anything you could do that would kind of, uh, win the favour and win the trust of a wasp? What would you have to do, do you think? Well, if you had it from a little grub. Yeah. And you fed it- he had his favourite marmalade. It doesn't affect it though, does it? A bee <laughs> dies, doesn't it, if it does it, so it's not gonna, like, use it willy-nilly. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy for you to say. But a wasp. <laughs> I, I, I do you, what, they, you think they sting arbitrarily? They just sting for the fun of it? They're like, like sort of like delinquent insects? Or delinquent I think so, cause last yeah. night, right, I mean, this is part of educating Ricky in a way, but something I learned last night hmm. was that tarantulas only bite you if you annoy it. <laughs> Right. They don't, they don't, mm -hmm. do you know how people say, oh, if you're in a sleeping bag living in a jungle, a spider will get in there and it'll bite you. Yeah, yeah. Apparently not, you've got to really annoy it. The thing that it really hates is having its leg sort of twisted. <laughs> <laughs> it hates having its leg twisted. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. But, but that's more for- Is that what they said in the documentary? <laughs> No, no, I actually said it's almost also... certainly not, Steve. <laughs> almost certainly not. Were you watching not. the documentary? No, 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 I was reading it. Oh, you're reading it. And, um, it was this guy. Was it scrawled on the wall scene like a public toilet? No, I'll tell <laughs> you. No. I'll, I'll tell you more about that later. Oh, it's right, part of the, uh, thing. Okay. So if part you don't trust the, the evil wasp, what uh, animal do you trust? What's your favourite? Well, I, I also, uh, I said to him, right, supposing your, your mind, right, was put, your mind got put into any animal, right, and you've got to get from where you are now, Right? To Glasgow, right, as an animal, right? But the authorities will be looking out for it. <laughs> okay. And it's shooting you, right? And, uh, what, what, you went through loads, didn't you? I was thinking about it for a th it must have took me about an hour. So your yeah. mind, sorry, your mind has been put into an animal. Anyway, yeah, so it's you and, and this you, animal thinking right, yeah. you've got to get to somewhere. But the, but the maybe, authorities maybe know you're in the animal? Yeah, maybe your body is in Glasgow somewhere and you've got to get this animal to get to you so it can transfer its mind back into your body. But yeah. the but government knows that I'm- oh, <laughs> we've all had that conversation. <laughs> So the government, the government's going, Carl can't have yeah, his own brain back. I only have it with Carl, we don't yeah, have these conversations, yeah. go on, yeah. So yeah, so you're, you're on the way. So think about good. it, you, you think about it just for a second, so, let's recap. <laughs> your, your body's in Scotland. <laughs> right. He's the only one that takes my question seriously. Your, your brain is in London. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. And there's like loads of security and stuff looking out in the sky for animals or looking on, on the field seeing what's trying- looking a bit suspicious. <laughs> yeah. Trying- trying to get to your body- And they're shooting the brain, them. And they're shooting everything and killing all the animals. What thing would you pick to get your brain to Scotland that wouldn't get caught? And I reckon that I've- I've got the answer. A wasp? No, cause think about it, a lot of people get irritated if it sort of wanted to get a lift. <laughs> In a car, okay. going down the motorway, if someone's driving it's a wasp yeah. in the car, it's a yeah. nightmare. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. <laughs> cause a right accident. Yeah. So think of something that people wouldn't, you know. And the clock's ticking as well. You're you know, taking you this really very seriously, yeah. aren't you, Carl? you've only got a couple you of- thought, You've given this a lot of thought, haven't you? You have. Yeah. Um, so, uh, something with speed. Yeah, it's something got- Something can travel quite speedily. Well, well that's- yeah. well, And something well, that's also inconspicuous. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. that the sort of thing you're- you're well, That's what you're doing? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and is it a, is it a creature that's, uh, that's native to this country? Yeah. Right. 
Yes. I've got no idea, Carl. What are you think? Tell him. A flea. A flea? Think Tell him it. why. Think about it. Um, right, this flea, it's got my brain. <laughs> it's dead small, the flea. <laughs> Thanks right. for clearing that up. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it, so it goes, right, I've got to get to Scotland. So it jumps on someone who's going to Euston Station. Right. They, they don't know it's there. No. The government can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> Think of that, Nathan. <laughs> Think of people who just tuned in. Yeah. Now, uh, people get on the train, goes to Glasgow or Edinburgh, wherever in Scotland mm. it is. It jumps off. It goes right. Uh, jumps on someone else who's going the way it needs to go. Gets there. Still, no one's seen it. Jumps on me. I get my brain back. Yeah. The government are like. Phew. But and you feel confident that your brain would fit in that of a fleas? Well, you said there was no problem with the size of it. You said you could. That certainly wouldn't be. So, <laughs> no. You, I, I pretty much genius. you could download everything you know into a flea. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's genius. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, What good would you thinking. rather have, right? Um, roller skate feet and there's little wheels, right? Uh, chopstick hands. Yeah? Mm. Instead of hands. Chopsticks instead of hands. Wheels instead of feet. Yeah. Right? Or acne. Uh, how big are the wheels? <laughs> <laughs> Can I take you guys back to the old school? Do you mind if we take them, take it back to the old school? Well, yeah, what are you gonna do? What are uh, you gonna lay on me? No, I just, maybe a bit of a Del Sol. Is yeah, that yeah, a problem? Yeah. Is it a problem yeah. going back to the old school? No, 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 no,
<laughs> Brilliant. Okay. And the last one, uh, what's tomato with you? <laughs> <laughs> what's tomato with you? Yeah. <laughs> Look how pleased he is. You so, you're, you're obsessed with puns, aren't you, at the moment, Kay? You, you, it you just know. works. I think it works. Yeah. <laughs> we love puns. So, there you go. So okay. which of those are you gonna choose, right? Oh, well, I'm gonna have to choose. Don't do that. You know it can't live without it. <laughs> Can we oh. play a tune and we'll come back with yeah, that? I can find <laughs> out what that is. <laughs> yeah. Wow, what a history lesson that's gonna be. Daddy Warhols and Bohemian Like You on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl. What's the story then? Right, so what, what did you say you're going for? You've got your three titles, your three teasers. Well, I think I'm gonna go for Don't Do That To It. You know it can't live without an edge. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> right. Right. So this well, is uh, educating Ricky for those yeah. who have just tuned in. Now, something that Ricky told me about when he was educating me was that a cockroach, if you cut its head off, um, it lives for a week. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And the only reason it dies is because it can't take on water. Sure. It, it doesn't have a great time in that week though, does no. it? I mean, it doesn't get no. much done, I don't imagine. It just, it just needs water and because it can't find any uh -huh. by its eyes, it eventually dies. Yeah. Right? No. So, so it what- No, it's not, that's not, it's, it's anyway. can't drink. Anyway. So, with the, have you heard that one about worms? Okay. All right, I've gone. If you cut a worm in half, yeah. um, a lot of people have said in the past that it'll turn into two worms. <laughs> right. But that isn't actually true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> no, it's a, it used to be like, you know, uh, kids, kids at school said, said it on, yeah, kids at school and stuff. You'd, yeah. So that, you know, a lot of people think that. Don't pick him up on stuff, Steve. It's bad enough. Sure. So, but what they can do, if you get a worm, right, and you find out which end its head's at. Right. <laughs> if you sort of, you've got its head there at the left hand side, right, and if you sort of cut it in half. Right. But not in half. So there's more of its neck than the tail, if you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. The bit that you've cut off will sort of die and the rest of the worm will get better. So in a way, you can cut it in half and it'll survive, but only one half will survive. Okay. Yeah? What have you learned that? I wish you hadn't chosen that one. <laughs> 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 yeah, I know, I know, because it's not, it's nothing, is it? <laughs> yeah, it's not like a joke, um, how do you tell a worm's head from its eye? You put, put it in a, a bowl of flour and wait till it farts. Yes. Right? I told my mate that. Right, and he went, what if it coughs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Y yeah. So, it is, there is a bit of truth in, in that myth of cutting one in half. Where did you get this information? I don't understand where you get this that, information that from. That was from the Fatian Times. <laughs> it was right. like the myth, the myth about worms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the big, that was the big article that week. Did it take you as long to read that article? <laughs> As it took me to tell us just then. <laughs> I like the fact that it starts off debunking a myth yeah. that we have known of anyway. <laughs> exactly. You know the the big the big thing about cutting a worm in half and making two worms. <laughs> no. no. Yeah. What's the other one? What's I the mean, other? It's not the thing to do either. By the way, don't don't go doing it. No. It's not very nice. But, it's cruel. But it can get by. And it's pointless. Point. Yeah. There's no scientific worth. Yeah. In that. Well, there you go. Okay then. So the others now, you what see what I do. What's no, I'll tell you the other titles, you're not having them yet. That's, that's the whole idea of this. People will be driving or about to go out doing the shopping, they'll think about that now. What was the other two? Well, the other two They were... won't think about that, they've forgotten <laughs> no, that already. No, they will. <laughs> they will. No, they've forgotten that already. <laughs> if only it was raining and what's tomato with you. Right, that, you've got to tell that one. No, you've got to tell no, tomato no, with no. you. Look, look what's happening, you see, you already want more of education. And this is what listeners will be doing. You, I tell you, you, I wish you were a teacher. I so <laughs> wish you were a <laughs> yeah, teacher. Do you know what I mean? Right. And kids would be saying, I know it's half past three, but I don't want to go home, I want more. Yeah. And that's, that's what I'm doing with you. I'm teaching you. Why are you teaching me <laughs> things about not to cut worms in half and what's tomato with you? Please tell me what's tomato with you, Carl. In a bit. In a Carl, bit. In a bit. Rick, what? I'd say he, he's, he's thought the show through, he's yeah. teasing the audience, you're excited, they're listening. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. So listen, I think we should all, cause we got your competition to squeeze and we got all these great good goodies. Let's not this forget, hello, children of the corn. I do feel we slightly guilty that, before but, but, but now this is Carl Pilberton's show. I, d I don't think we should have our names involved. No. <laughs> it's not fair, is it? And I think we should give Carl the money. I don't want my yeah. name to this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Ricky Gervais show. <laughs> yeah. Right, the quiz. Yeah. 
We'll, uh, well, we get that out of the way because they've only got an hour to start. Don't eating. you worry about that, Carl. I've already got this one. I'm thinking, I'm thinking on your terms now. Let's play a tune. We'll come back what with, the, with the big competition information. All right? Money Mark. We've got a, a classic from Money Mark from his album Push the Button. Play that, Carl. And afterwards. Are we excited? You got the competition? Look at his face. He's so excited yeah, now. He's, he's thought this through. He's loving it. Rockbusters. Rockbusters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. 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 Should we do that? Yeah. Brilliant. Go on. You're rejuvenated, are you? Yeah. Let's go go for it now. Second hour. Yeah. Yeah. Hangover yeah. finished with? Yeah. It's yeah. all done. Done. Good. Done. Had some water. Excellent. <laughs> That'll often sort it out. Yeah. Well Flea, done. Flea is the best way. He just had an argument with a punter. Someone mm. called up and said, I don't think a flea's very good. How would the flea uh, know? Tell him, tell him what he said. He said, how would the flea know what train to get on? He went, he gets to Houston and look at the timetable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he, he went, he went, we're not gonna agree on this. He got annoyed at him, cause the bloke said he'd be better to be a wasp. <laughs> yeah. A wasp would not survive, would it, on, you know, a virgin train or something. <laughs> so. Why, why wouldn't it? It just wouldn't because people really don't like wasps, so somebody oh. would end up clouting it and killing it and that yeah. brain would never get to his body, yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, it is quiz time. Hooray! <laughs> this is, this is the moment we've uh, all been looking forward to. Uh, do you want, do you want, do you want, uh, do you want to tease them with the prizes? <laughs> no. <laughs> not really, because they no. might not bother phoning in. Or, <laughs> oh, it's not a phone, or is it? It's an email. Alright. Okay, yeah. well, let me, a quick reminder then, we've got to the office. I don't want people to think that we'll just keep plugging the office DVD. <laughs> we've got nothing else to give away. No, no one gives anything away. No, no that's just hanging around in Carl's little room. Did you get a guy from HMV just to nick- did you get a guy just to nick these from HMV? Did you get a guy with a beard and a ponytail? Was that yeah. the story? Right. So we got the Office uh, DVD, obviously. Uh, we got uh, the remix, uh, XFM's remix album, uh, Volume Two. That's uh, sort of remixes of various tunes. Quite a good little compilation album here. One of those kind of the best Coldplay, Travis, Oasis, blah 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 albums in the world Excellent. ever. Let's uh, some of them because yeah. there's nothing in the <laughs> Exactly. Have a look on there. Four Alanis Morissette, nine Catatonia. <laughs> I just counted that. But thing. uh, the big one, the big star prize that you're all playing for is, of course, the DVD <laughs> widescreen version of Children of the Corn, <laughs> Stephen King's horror film. Lest we forget, it's got Peter Horton <laughs> as the star. <laughs> so, <laughs> so look forward to that. Um, are we g we're going to uh, give Shadow away separately, are we? We're going to uh, do that separately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll give away the, sh the DJ Shadow tickets at a separate. Right. So we're playing for those DVDs and CDs, and what and we're going to do? Email competition. Don't bother e phoning. Email. Yeah, the phone lines are lighting up a bit. So put the phone down. Get the computer started up, yep. and it's ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk if you know the answers to these, right? And the way it works, we did it last week, but if you didn't hear it, I give you some initials and like a bit of a cryptic clue. So, and, uh, you work out who the band is or the artist, okay. right? It's always, it's always a band or an artist. It's not any TV programs and that. Uh -huh. So, uh, say like last week we had, um, uh, we had S, didn't we? And it was, uh, better than the average homeless person. And that was Super Trump, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not always XFM music, it can be anything. And there's three of them. Uh, um, they've got to get all three of them. You've got to get all three and email in. I know. Like how long this intro so far has <laughs> taken. Yeah, but, but, but here we go then. Right. right. First initials, LR. 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 Okay. Right? Yeah. And the cryptic clue is, uh, I'll You should have thought it through. You should have thought it out before you came in. Yeah, yeah cryptic clue. You got it. Yeah. Um, I'll take that book to the toilet with me. I'll take that book to the toilet with me. Yeah. Yeah. LR. LR. I'll take that book to the toilet with me. And don't shout out if you know the answer, cause. No. No idea, Carl. No idea. Right, okay, so there's one. Right, the second one, FL. FL. This one's actually been emailed in as a suggestion. Okay. Uh, that person who's done that, don't email in, cause you're disqualified <laughs> from the comp. Uh, so. <laughs> I'd love him to be a teacher. So. It'd be great, wouldn't it? Just to see him one day. Can't we do that? Can't we get you a placement somewhere to, for you to teach history to sort of like, you know, 14 year olds? I think like. science, Rick. Science would be good, yeah. Right. Uh, look, uh, I'll tell you what. Go uh, there, you got a lot of, um, t just quickly for me, Carl, explain, say, um, what can we get him to explain that everyone uh, learns as a kid science? Uh, photosynthesis? <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> so F L, right? Yeah. F L are the letters and the cryptic clue. Blow the candles out before you eat the cake. Blow the candles out before you eat the cake. Yeah. Blow okay. the candles out before you eat the cake. The letters there. F L. All right. All right. We got L R. We got F L. Yeah. And finally, the third one. N S. Hold on. How many have they got to get? Three. Three. Don't worry. There's no more after this, really. right? N S. How can I wash up in something shaped like that? <laughs> <laughs> right. 
That's one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, so very quickly recap, just in case we missed any. Oh. LR is the first one. LR. I'll take that book to the toilet with me. Cryptic clue. N. Uh, we had FL. Blow the candles out before you eat the cake. And the final one, NS. How can I wash up in something shaped like that? If you think you know the bands, you just email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. You win the DVDs, the CDs, and uh, that's it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> He's great, isn't he? I could just, I could sit here and watch him all day do this. Wow. Well, um, so ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Uh, and we'll give the answers out just before, you know, we finish because okay. then we'll keep them up. All right. Oh, okay. well, just briefly. This is, uh, module, uh, 4A, uh, Natural History, yeah? Yep. Just, just briefly explain, um, uh, evolution. Since, you know, natural selection, origin of the species, Darwin, like, just briefly describe. That's the monkey thing. There <laughs> <laughs> is, isn't it? Oh, well done. Yeah, go Play on. Tune, Carl. What, we, don't you have fancy playing? Um, Rick. <laughs> I know you're always keen to rejuvenate the reputations of certain artists when you think maybe they've been kind of unfairly treated in yeah. the, uh, history of rock and roll. Yeah. I'll tell you a band I've always thought has been treated badly. Yeah. The Lemonheads. You on. You with me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lemonheads, if I could talk I'd tell you. Yeah. He wrote some good little tunes every yeah, day before he went good. to get potty. What would you rather have, right? He, Carl, would you rather have a lemon for a head, <laughs> a radio for a head, um, what other band is there with something head? Radiohead. Oh, you've done that. Yeah. <laughs> or a talking head. <laughs> <laughs> right. Third one. No, but you don't know what. It, it, no, because you've got you, and then you've got uh, someone else's head on top, and it, it doesn't shut up. It's my head. <laughs> it's my talking head coming out of your head. Yeah. So a radio head, just a radio head, and you can tune in, right? You know, you said there, Carl, that <laughs> wasps were one of the most irritating <laughs> things on the planet. Can I offer another suggestion? <laughs> yeah. You with me on that? Uh, I, I, I am. <laughs> no, today. go on in. Okay. Educating Ricky, we got we got we got two left, don't we? I'm looking we've forward to this. We've still got these. two more. We've still got. Uh, if only it was raining. Yeah. And uh, what's tomato with you? <laughs> 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 I'll tell you what, I wish the listeners could see how happy he was when we started getting emails coming in. Oh yeah, people, they're flooding in actually. Yeah, and he's so happy, he started pretty... dancing along going, well, that proves it's a good competition, he's dead! Look at that, look at that! Oh, look at that, mate. What? There's look loads of people that. emailing there. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you what it is, Carl, it's not the competition, it's this, Children of the, the Corn! corn. Widescreen DVD! <laughs> Next week, some staples and pencils! <laughs> I'll tell you what. A piece of carpet! <laughs> I'll tell you what, right? What? Now we've got them and they're staying. Something we, we've still got to do. Yeah. Is, uh. He is running the show now. He's doing well, isn't he? Because I've done nothing. I've done nothing towards this. I'm coming up my hangover a little bit if you're worried. Remember, remember <laughs> so, go remember, on. Remember last week we yeah. started a new feature called, yeah. uh. That song's got a good story in it. And, Brilliant. And I love your catchy titles. They're excellent. Right. And the idea was it was a story in yeah. a song which meant that if it was played on the radio you couldn't just like fade it out because you've got to have the full story. Yeah. Right. Well last week we started the feature with Stevie Wonder, uh, Living for the City. Yeah. Right. But you played the version where it fades out. Yeah. I didn't know there was more to it. So Steve told me what album it was on. Yeah. I've gone and got it. We've got the second half to that story. Yeah. This week. Yeah. So, you've got half the story, what was it, what had happened is like, <laughs> the lad's living in Mississippi, there's not much going on there. Mississippi? <laughs> that, that's that's someone off Rainbow's mum. Yeah. Um, living, what, Mississippi? Yeah. He, his dad's, was his, his mum was a cleaner. Yeah. Try to get by, they didn't have a great life, but they still looked after the kids and yes. stuff. There's more to it than that. Have you got it ready? <laughs> There's more yeah, to it than okay. that! I should hope so! We'll probably do it at about half past three. So look okay. forward to that, the second it's half of that. Stevie Wonder's <laughs> Living for the City, <laughs> a week later. <laughs> <laughs> I love a show that's carefully planned. Uh, so listen, that, no, I, I'm, I've watched got, the tomato This isn't thing. a show. This isn't a show. This isn't a radio show. <laughs> this is, I don't know what this is. No, I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> we, we just might as well start banging tambourines and uh, it's ridiculous. <laughs> this is rubbish, right? <laughs> but why? <laughs> some people emailed in. <laughs> Put him in a wheelie bin. <laughs> Went to Blackpool, right? Um, some people emailed in the stories, songs with stories in it. One of them was Babushka. And he went, what's that? And I went and asked Katie, what is it? I said, oh, it's about a woman who dresses up as another woman to introduce her husband. He went, they wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Just dismissed it like that. Why do you think it would work? 
Because you'd, you'd know. I mean, say like, say like, um, right, Suzanne, right, who yeah. I go out with, yeah. right? She can see me from, <laughs> say if I'm coming down the high street, Yeah. she knows it's me by the way I walk. <laughs> right. So, just the fact that this woman went and put a wig on, there is no- <laughs> I know, but you're saying that she put a disguise on and he's yeah. like, oh, I fancy her, and he takes her out and he, he doesn't know it's his missus. I just- <laughs> you're, not, you're not buying it. I mean, I'm- I'm controlling this Where feature. is the flea- where is the flea with your brain going to Glasgow? Perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Babushka. Rubbish. Carl, can we have the tomato story after the next tune? Yeah. Bit of Coldplay? Yeah, love it. Yeah. Coldplay. The scientist on XFM 104.9. Right. Competition, isn't it? Uh, no, it's Educating Ricky Part 2. Oh, is it? Yep. I wasn't even listening. He's doing all the work, I wasn't even listening. <laughs> oh, and he's spilled some water down that. Right, what's this one again then? Right, uh, What's the, uh, teaser headline? Teaser headline is, What's Tomato With You? Brilliant. Yeah? yeah. Go on in. How excited were you when you came up with that? You couldn't wait to come in and tell us, could you? <laughs> I just, <laughs> I, I think it's face. a good one because you won't forget it now, will you? Okay. I mean, like the worm one. What's so special about the worm? Uh, you know, a lot of people think that if you cut a worm in half, it will, two worms will grow, but no. What happens is if you cut the head end slightly nearer the tail than the head, the tail will die, um, but the worm with the head will be okay. So, um, it's exploded a myth, and it taught me something. <laughs> right, so, <laughs> the second one, part two of Educating Ricky, uh, what's tomato with you? Yeah. What this one's about is, uh, ages ago, <laughs> <laughs> scientific. It's never, it's never, there's never a date. <laughs> it's never, never a date. <laughs> okay, settle down, children. Now, this is A level history. Right. Once upon a time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In a, when a mental place with swords was a king. <laughs> Forget his name, but he was a loony. Uh, yeah. so, and it was, we uh, literally ages ago. Yeah. So, uh, good luck <laughs> in the exam. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, like, you know, all right, many years ago. Oh, yes. That, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cleared that up. Um, Go on. They thought tomatoes were poisonous. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. Um, because what- what- Hold on, are they gonna be proved wrong at the end of this story? Well, what- Cause I don't wanna give away the ending, uh, but is it something to do with the- d are they poisonous tomatoes? No. Oh, you're having a laugh. <laughs> I don't believe it. But- Go on. But- Go on. Are they gonna be eating tomatoes all this time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Steve, what's tomato with you, anyway? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so oh, wait a minute. What's Let's just recap with you? quickly. Recap quickly. Many years ago, yeah. when people thought tomatoes were poisonous, yeah. Go on, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they, they didn't know they were poisonous then because they were still eating them. But what was that? Well, they're not. But they're not poisonous. Ah, but hang on a minute. All right, it's not. I, I'm just going to listen. I'm okay, not even going to yeah, talk. No, okay, I'm not going to tackle So, anymore. if you remember, <laughs> years ago they didn't have like pottery plates. <laughs> they had they had lead plates. Right. <laughs> what are you talking? Just let him talk. Sorry, what year is this? Let him talk. Come on. <laughs> Plates made out of lead, and right. what they'd end up doing, they'd, they'd say, right, do you want a tomato? And they'd go, yeah, all right. And they'd put the tomato on the lead plate and cut it, and because of the acid in the tomato, right, it would sort of, uh, sort of, uh, make the lead runny, and the lead would go into the tomato, and they'd say, oh, it's lovely, this, and they'd be eating it. They'd get food poisoning, lead poisoning, what have you, and they'd be really ill. So, they thought tomatoes were poisonous, so they didn't eat them for many years. And, and when you say they, do you mean the happen. people of Narnia? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this did not happen, Where Carl. was this happening? Uh, sort of in, in Britain and that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you put him on the spot there. Oh, I hope there's no, uh, uppity pupils at this school when they go, what do you mean, sir? Oh, if you're gonna, oh, I'm fed <laughs> up with you. Do you understand? <laughs> No. So, so the, the No, 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 you've got, no, 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 right, right, okay, first of all, Carl, where'd you get this information from? Where did you get that? Fourteen times as well? Do you know, I, I, You can't remember. I don't know where I got that from. <laughs> I don't know where I got it from. <laughs> but, but, what, I don't, why don't you think that makes sense? <laughs> but, but, <laughs> what? Someone once got lead poisoning from a tomato? No, not just one, loads, and then all of a sudden. <laughs> No, no, no. Why is this educating me? Because I'm telling you that tomatoes. You <laughs> but need I them. can't take anything away from this. Yep. I don't know what to take away from this. What have I learned? <laughs> what have I learned? Don't mix lead with tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this educational in any shape or form? What are you What are you telling me? A long time ago, in the land of Glunk, <laughs> right, where the ninnies did slib, right, they thought tomatoes were poisonous because they ate plates of lead. What are you talking about? Yeah, but we all know tomatoes aren't poisonous. <laughs> <laughs> is, that what, 
Is what that are you what we're talking about? The story? Is that the moral of the story? Don't believe these people that I'd never heard of before. What are you talking about, Carl? I just, I think it's a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, it is a bit weird, yeah. It's, it's the same people that were spreading those malicious worm rumours. <laughs> My hangover's coming back. I've got to get some water. Play a record that was rubbish. <laughs> I'm eating. Hey? I'm eating. So am I. Carl, you have to carry on. Um. Right, yeah. <laughs> we're all eating. Oh, crisps. Food crisps. Mm. <laughs> so last week, yeah, you were playing your feature, um, that song I shouldn't switch off because I'm enjoying the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, we played Living for the City, only you played the single mix, which yeah. doesn't have the entire second act, if yeah. you will. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> Carl, you've not heard it before. I've you're never excited. Heard it before. You're excited um, to hear the second act because, as far as you're aware, there was a young guy. He's living with his family. They're fairly impoverished in Mississippi, but you know they're happy. They're getting on all right. Mm. But you're not even aware that he's he's moving to the big city. No, it just fades out. Well, I that's have, the I've, city in question. I mean, I've liked this song for must be, you know, three or four years, mm. and I've always listened to the single version. I had no idea that I didn't know the full story. So um, yeah. It's not, I mean, it, I mean, and I know you, your, your attention to detail, you like to know the full story, like, where everything well, was. Well, the whole idea of the feature is to say, yeah. you know, you've got to listen yeah. where to the song. Where was the lead plate thing? Where was the lead plate thing? Where was the lead plate thing? That was like a few, few years where? back. In, where? Was in, it? Where was in it? In Britain, in Scotland. Yeah. It was a problem all over the world. They had to deal with it. <laughs> You're making it up now. Is it so, something you saw in Lord of the Rings? <laughs> <laughs> Right. So anyway, yeah. yeah. So, so the lion so and the witch. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> Go on. So far, then, what what do we what did we learn in this story? From we Stevie learned so Wonder? far from Stevie that there's a young lad. He's as I say, he's, he's got a family. He's fairly happy, except they're very poor and they struggle to get by. But they're happy. And they're doing it anyway. He's moving to the big city. Mm. Carl, this is the bit you didn't realise. Just play the track. Okay. Here we go. So this is halfway through. This there, is halfway yeah? through the tune now. This is right. you've not heard this before, yeah. have you? Let's okay. Go. Sorry, I accidentally played an episode of Kojak. <laughs> by mistake. <laughs> we were gonna play a song. Carl, what did you make of that then? Yeah, what's happening there then? Eh? He, he, he was living with his family, he was fairly impoverished. He went He's on moved a bus, to the new bus he was on, was it? Right, so. So, so what's your take on it, Carl? After hearing that, what I've worked out by it, the first part that we heard last week, uh, everything's alright, but it's not that great living in Mississippi, right? So he goes, oh, I'm gonna go to New York. Plenty of work there. Yeah. They'll they'll sort of accept me as you know and everything. So he goes there, and uh, the weird thing is, he's hardly like been in New York for a second. <laughs> he gets on a bus. All of a sudden, some coppers arresting him. He's like, "What's going on?" And then he's got ten years. I mean, didn't. What you can't hear, because the levels are quite bad, I mean, I work with sound, <laughs> I can't really hear what's going on. You're criticising Stevie I'm sort Wonder, of eh? guessing that he didn't pay his bus fare or something. And, uh, <laughs> ten years. <laughs> he got ten years for that. I, d I really don't know what was going on. Right. Oh. But you're not happy because obviously it's quite dangerous. Do, do you think Stevie Wonder left out some vital ingredients in the story, in your, in your education? Like where it was or <laughs> at least he got where it was. You can tell what year it is. It's uh, right in the mid-70s there, that funky, that funky New York 70s sound. Alright. Yeah. You're pretty disappointed, aren't you? You're pretty what, worried. Cause so what went on? Yeah. What you happened? know, well, you know, you're aware, Carl, that that because that shows quite a bad image of New York. It's quite an intolerant city, by all accounts. They arrested a guy, but it is quite bad for being black. That's that's one song where you shouldn't go to New York. Killing a Georgie Rod Stewart. That lad, he was doing all right in Scotland, and said, "I'm going to go to the big city." He got done in. Yeah. Seems to me it's that you don't go there if you've if you've got like problems. Don't think New York's the answer. Right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what are you saying that if you if you're a bit fed up with your life, but you got, you know, you live with your mum and she's like really nice and you got friends yeah. and life's not that bad. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't go and have, don't go and be murdered or what? What are you saying? Don't go and be murdered. Well, don't go and- Well, leave, leave, leave home. What, 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 Leave home, but don't go to New York. Right. There's mm -hmm. other places. Where would you go? Sheffield? I uh, don't know, but- Yeah. But so you, you're a little, you're a little mank lad, weren't you? You're in your, you're in your garden, you had your train set, your brother blew up, there was a horse next door. And you thought, ah, oh, I want to go to London. So, do you know what I mean? You've so, you're 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 like that. Yeah, but you're you're all, in many ways like the fella yeah, in well, that song, and like and like um, Georgie. No, because in many I, in many ways you are a bit like Georgie, aren't you? I had a car, so no, are you a little bit like Georgie in many no, ways? No, I didn't what? get on a bus. I had a car, so I wasn't gonna have the problem he had for a start. Right, <laughs> but I mean, I suppose there's loads of things you can look at that story and take out of it. That's what I like about the feature, right? <laughs> <laughs> what? So that's what you like about the feature. 
the feature that we're doing. Oh, right. The, that song's got a good story. If you had a time machine, where would you go? What year would you go? Would you Probably go the sixties. Okay, would you go forward at all? What's no. your favourite year in the future? No, I don't, I, I, I don't know. If someone could tell your future to you, I if someone could, do it, you, do you it. would want to know. No. You wanna, you're straight away, you knew it. <laughs> straight away, <laughs> yeah, there yeah, was yeah. no hesitation. Yeah. You've thought about this, haven't you? No. You've okay. thought to yourself, if someone could reveal my future, Carl, you've, you've, got, got, a, you've got to do one of these things, right? You know, you know, you know like Quantum Leap, like a fella in Quantum Leap, what's his name? I forget his name, but yeah. Yeah, and uh, you've got a little fella with Hal, and he's telling you, right? Would you rather go back, and you go into someone's body, would you rather go back, um, you could go back to be, um, uh, a donkey? Donkey that's carrying Mary to Bethlehem. You could, uh, be a Saigon prostitute in 1975. <laughs> All those GIs queuing up. Think uh, about it. Uh, oh, or, um, you could be, uh, um, Moby Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Which of those would you be, Carl? Uh, <laughs> think about it. Probably Moby Dick's the best option, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> so what, what work have we got? <laughs> Yeah. Play a tune car. After this we need to educate Ricky for the final time. A final time educating Ricky. We've still got to give away these tickets to DJ Shadow and we've got to give the answers to your magnificent Oh, we've only got a quarter now. It's not enough time in this show. It's packed. <laughs> Race for the prize from the Flaming Lips. Competition answer time, is it, Carl? Yeah, we did, uh, we did this like, uh, about an hour ago. Rockbusters. Yeah. Rockbusters. With Carl Bilkington. Yeah, uh, I gave you some initials. The initials sort of, uh, made up a band. We had LR, we had... Uh, NS. Yeah, just to, 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 well, give us the clues. Give us the clues and the answers. What? Right. So, LR, the clue was I'll take that book to the toilet with me. What's the the answer? answer? Lou Reed. Lou Reed. Good. Lou That's Reed. very good. That's okay. very good, Carl. Well done. All yeah, right. Right okay, next one. FL, blow the candles out before you eat the cake. Yeah. yeah? We just played them. Flaming right. lips. There we are. Very okay. Good. And the final one was <laughs> NS, how can I wash up in something shaped like this? Yeah. That was N Sync. Yeah. N Sync. N sync, it'd be a bit. N sync. If you had a sink, you wash up in a sink. Yeah. Shaped like an N, you'd be like, oh, I've got <laughs> everything out. So, so, has anyone got that? Wow. Right. Well, so, no, there are right answers, I have to say, Carl. You've done very well. It was a, an enormous response. I'm just going to click on one of these emails randomly. I'm not even going to look. Who we got here? We've got. Kath Turner is the winner. Kath Turner gets those great uh, DVDs and just CDs, like including Kath watching Children of the Corn. Tonight. Children of the Corn. She, she was going out, but corn. I imagine she's going to count. She's going to phone a few friends and say, "I can't come out on meal." <laughs> exactly. They go, "You're not, you, you're not watching a <laughs> Children of the Corn." I go, "No, no, no, no." no and no. Uh, we've learned as well that there are about uh, five other sequels to Children of the Corn, so maybe we'll give those away in consecutive Brilliant. weeks. What else have we got to do? Uh, have we got anything else to do? Quick, Carl. What would you rather be, a tree frog or a tree crab? Quick. What would you rather be? Straight away. Tree frog or a tree crab? Tree frog. Why? I don't know what one is. You just said pick one quick. A tree frog or a tree crab? What would you rather be? A tree frog, yeah? Yeah. Okay, what would you rather be? A tick or a leech? They both suck blood. There's not a lot in it. Leech. Go on. Why? Because I heard they've got, uh, I was reading about them yesterday, they've got 300 teeth and, and what they do is, if they get on you, right, and you didn't get it off with a match or anything, <laughs> it would stay there and it eat five times the amount of blood to make it five times bigger than the size of itself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then, you're a scientist! And then it'll just go, oh, I've had enough, and it falls off. Okay. Na naturally. What would you rather be, a puppy or a kitten? <sighs> kitten. Why? Just look better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. Some great adverts there on XFM. Oh, I enjoyed it. Point 0.9. <laughs> Absolutely. We, some, we have to give away these, uh, three pairs. We have to give these away, Rick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've got three pairs of I DJ know, Shadows. I know, but this got to turn up with this. this is so jam-packed. I think we've planned too much for this <laughs> we show. We have indeed. We next week, this, I, I think we have a little bit flabbier next week. <laughs> Rick. Do less, do can less. We, Rick, can we chill out next week, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on um, then. So, yeah, we, uh, we, uh, any, any ideas, guys? Any questions? Sort of DJ Shadow-related questions? Any Shadow? DJ Shadow. Or DJ? Questions? What Carl, does, any ideas What does there? the word DJ mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's too easy, it's it? uh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you something I do know. Go on. Right? But I, I can't really get a question out of it. Go on, just tell us. There's a shadow somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's already good, isn't it? I'm loving it no, already. No, no, right? There's a shadow, I think it was in America. Yeah. And uh, it's on a quiet road. I, I'm guessing somewhere like Boston, that's what I, I well, imagine. <laughs> okay. Right? No, 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 no. Somewhere yeah. like Boston. 
and people at night used to see this shadow moving about and they'd go, what's that? Right? And, and it got known that the town, the little local town got known for this shadow but it didn't cause any problems. People what are you to... talking about? Well, it was <laughs> like... You've lost me. What are you talking no, about? No, do you know like some places get famous, like, uh, Scotland's got the Loch Ness Monster and that, but no, it doesn't cause any- yeah. But it doesn't cause any problems. It doesn't exist, go Right, on. so there's this shadow walking about on the road. And, what? Uh, what do you mean? No, what's he- again? <laughs> rubbish. Right, so he's Nonsense. walking about- Where did you read this? Where did you see this? He's walking about- this was on the internet and- I'm Oh, sure. sorry! <laughs> sorry! Right. I thought it was shite. <laughs> I didn't know it was on the internet. Right, so this shadow is moving about and God. uh... Independently of an object. Yeah, and the, and the local mayor and that is like, yeah, it's a bit weird but it's not harming anyone. <laughs> <laughs> the mayor involved! <laughs> was he mayor? elected to that post? Hey, hey, mayor, we got a problem down here, seems like a shadow. <laughs> uh, well, it's not causing any problems. No, it's just- <laughs> it's causing any problems? Yeah, go well, on. That's, but that's the thing, it was left for years and then it did start causing problems. <laughs> I see, that's it. If you leave these shadows to go unchecked, Rick, they go crazy. Yeah. You let them run amok in the yeah. city. Yeah. You've it, got to stab around on, on Roman shadows. What did, what did the shadow do? It was pushing people off the bike. <laughs> <laughs> it was what? It was pushing people off the bikes. <laughs> oh, I'll, fi I'll find out more for that next week. <laughs> Right, that'll tease them. Oh, you're a maniac! We'll do more on that. <laughs> we haven't had time for educating- Please never have children. Right, listen. <laughs> you're Just a Just promise maniac. me now you'll never have kids. But uh, we haven't got time. Okay, listen, for... alright, DJ Shadow, have we got time for these to give these tickets away? Yeah, if they just call up, we'll, No, um... I'll tell you what, I've got a question, right? Go on. Where do you th where does Carl think this may have taken place? If you've been listening to the show, where do you think this evil shadow has been running amok? Let us know. The number, Carl? Uh, ooh, Good question. 08 700 800 1234. So, uh, but that's it. We are that's actually it. out of time. We are indeed. Uh, have, I got, have I got time for a song for ladies? It's a bit tight. I was Why? told to finish now. Too. I know, but we've got to get finished early today, so. Why? Just because we have and we're wasting more time talking about why we have to. Oh, this is pathetic. So, <laughs> the call up. Uh, where did I see the ghost? Yeah. And you've got to pick the tickets up from reception. You can go tonight and see DJ Shadow. Shoddy, That's it. this right? is shoddy. Right, see you then. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Ashcroft, check the meaning on XFM 104.9. We're back, Steve. It's Saturday. That's true enough. Uh, Steve Merchant, that is. Hello there. I'm Ricky Gervais, obviously. Hello there. Carl's still away. Claire Sturges is back. That's Hello. absolutely true. Yeah. Hello there, Claire. Nice to see you. So, I think uh, a lot of people were hoping that Carl will be back this week, but yeah, uh, we're pleased to were. have you. No, they were actually. I did get some emails during the week. Really? Saying what? Just, <laughs> just saying it's really nice to you know hear you again on the Saturday afternoon. It's nice, and um, but but you're not really very funny. And when's Carl coming back? Uh, you know? So it's sort of being sure nice it wasn't to, to me. us. No, no, it was because <laughs> they think that as well. Yeah. <laughs> but no one can compete with Carl. They we, can't. Well, we used to sort of like. Um, come in and uh with the, when we discovered Carl early on we just thought this is comedy gold just let him speak his mind mm. but then we started thinking oh we can't follow him now yeah. so i remember steve going look we've got to come up with some we stuff need, we need to chat if anything we've got to say to each other we've got to say that in the first 20 minutes and then you just unleash carl yeah because like it's, a... cause it's, it's just you can't follow him yeah. and he's he goes off on one and they have stories of um upbringings with bizarre creatures that <laughs> lived in manchester that were half mm. human half bat and frog mm. and things. I'd love to take him back to Manchester in some kind of TV documentary. You know, when Carl oh. went home and just fond about maybe try and find the uh, amphibian twins or whatever those yeah, people were. They they, 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 yeah, so there was two two boys, both had big heads and webbed feet. They weren't related. They did they didn't hang around with each other. That I was went, all the information we heard. I went, why not? He went, it, that would have been too obvious. Yeah. Like they yeah. look at each other across a room and go, yeah, yeah you think if I'm coming to see you just because we've got <laughs> just because yeah. we're a similar species? Yeah. You're mistaken, mate. Yeah. You make your own friends. One starts to walk over, the other one shakes his head and just mouths too obvious. Yeah. <laughs> don't yeah. do it. Too out, obvious. out of one of his mouths. Yeah, that's what they're expecting. Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> don't, do it. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do it, Webby. Yeah, but anyway, he'll he'll be back sure, uh, shortly, I'm sure. He phoned me, um, uh, his dad's, um, ill. Uh, his dad's in hospital, so Carl went back to sort of look after his mum. He was so sweet, he said, oh, I'm back here just driving my mum around. He went, he said, so I'm begrudging. He just went, um, it's like old times. And, uh, I said, oh, so, sorry to hear that. And he went, that's alright, yeah. Um, and, uh, I think he's gonna be fine. Um, and I said, how was your holiday? He went, yeah, it was good. Except, <laughs> it was a nudist speech, didn't you tell me? <laughs> I went, of course it was. I went, what do you mean? He went, well, uh, sitting on the, I, I don't know why they have to do it. I don't know why they have to do it. Why do they have to do it? He went, Suzanne said they think there's nothing wrong with it, like being a transvestite. 
right? <laughs> right? I went, I love the fact that your girlfriend has to tell you what's wrong and right in the world. And he went, well, we're walking along the beach, fella coming towards us, with no about. I went, oh, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and he said, and he said, uh, and cause it wasn't all nude, He's walking round, he's stark naked and he wants the freedom of that, but he's got a big rucksack on his back with his clothes on just <laughs> to get changed. He went, so what's the point in that? <laughs> right? And I went, he should just carry the book. He went, what, and covered it up when he went? He went, oh yeah, good idea. <laughs> See? He went, but I wasn't happy. He said, and that was the first day, so we didn't go there again. <laughs> <laughs> So I, just see, I can just imagine his little face. <laughs> yeah, he's just going, all right, gobsmacked. That's out, yeah. that's out. What's that doing out? Mm. Why has mm. he got his out? I imagine Carl sort of dressed in a suit. <laughs> in a sort of safari <laughs> yeah. suit, done right up with a cravat. I'm not, I'm not undressing. I don't want people seeing the flesh. <laughs> oh, you know, that's, for, that's for you, love, and no one else. But I love the fact that I just, it's good and goes, Carl, they, they don't know there's anything wrong with it. They're just mm. happy that way. <laughs> and, he, and he, in his own mind, just goes, look, being a transvestite. <laughs> <laughs> he knows there's nothing wrong with that. I'm always a little bit suspect about people who like walking around nude I think you meant transvestites. No, no, nu nudists. <laughs> what? Hold on. Can you what have a- you can you be a naked something? transvestite? What are you then? Yeah, I suppose you're a- When Eddie Izzard's naked, is he a naked transvestite? That's an interesting metaphorical- is... a metaphysical question. Yeah. Yeah. On XFM 104.9. <laughs> if you know the answer to that metaphysical <laughs> question, or indeed any of the famous ones, uh, if a tree falls in a forest and no one hears it, has it fallen over? Any of those. Any of That's brilliant. Yeah, what's, if you what, leave the room, Rick, what's the does sound? it get quieter? Yeah what's, yeah, what's the sound of one leg hopping? <laughs> exactly. Uh, what we got there, Claire? Um, do you want some music? Or yeah, I'd love to hear it. What you got? Yeah. I've got the vines, actually. Oh, play, right. it, play it, play nice. it, play it. Hey, Claire, out of the way. <laughs> no, I'm not talking to you. It's the, uh, it's the name of the, uh, the song by the Vines. <laughs> right, excellent. So, yeah. Uh, oh, XFM 104.9. Right, nice. I'm yeah. Richard Mays with me, Steve Merchant. Hello there. And, uh, Claire, Claire Sturgis. Sturgis. Have Hello you ever there. been to, have it's you ever been to a nude speech? Is, have either of you been to a nude speech? Yes. I found- have you really- I- I- No, last month I went on holiday to Antigua and then I went on the nudist beach. Really? I wanted an all over. Sure. Mm. Cause I, um, <laughs> I was with my, uh, family once when we went on holiday, family holiday with, uh- I just heard you going on and a- and a well, inspector coming along going, and the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> and the glasses. And you, and you don't wear them there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, no, I went there with, uh, it was some friends of my fa- it was like family friends, you know, like kids, that, so it was kids my age and my sister's age who, uh, and parents were all friends, you know, da, 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 go, to, go on holiday to this, uh, end up on this nudist beach, not, not a nudist beach, but where people sunbathe topless or whatever. Or maybe, oh, yeah, maybe course. it was just uh, because, oh. maybe it was just because it was France. Where well, I yeah, think a lot of that exactly. goes on. Generally. Yeah, all, all, all yeah. beaches in, yeah, mm, yeah. Uh, I mean, semi no, but it's, that's different. The new speeches are sort of the cordoned off. Sure, yeah, yeah, with the, the cocks and everything. <laughs> <laughs> we can't say that. You can't say cocks. Or did you mean the chicken? You meant <laughs> the chicken. There's a lot of, a lot, a lot of, of naked people. Farms, people a lot of French male farms. Birds around there. There is them. a lot of poultry. And by male bird, I don't mean transsexual. You don't mean, no, I don't want to, because that's also, that's yeah. also offensive. <laughs> that is also offensive, so be careful. When, yeah. whenever Please be careful. Claire, Claire be careful well, what you're gonna say on there, because you've gotta be careful. I just wanna say to the radio authority, or anyone listening, when we say cock, we are referring to a male bird, and, and- There is no yeah. discussion there, there's nothing, no, there's no other not. issue, there's no there's other no ambiguity. Issue. Okay, go on, what are you talking? So, um, there's people walking around with their birds and, 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 uh, and often they got their knobs out as well. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, so they're, 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 it, was it was just a topless, it was just a topless beach. So we're all on So holiday. there were tits there as well? There were some tits. Uh, yeah. we, we've got, we've got a family of tits that come and eat the nuts. That chew think, on my I nuts. Go on. We're confusing, we're confusing. No, no, we have! Um, we're good, we're, Jane's got a little, um, bag of nuts. That right. she makes me hang out of the window. <laughs> right. So. So you'll often be hanging your nuts out the window. And the tits So the tits can. <laughs> Sure. God, I don't <laughs> know what- <laughs> Please! Go, go on with this story! Sorry, you, so what I'm saying is- God! What I'm saying is- Yeah. We went on her, there was family there. Yeah. There was some tits, there was some cocks. <laughs> and, uh, okay. and I found it all a little bit, cause I was about 14 or something, I found it all a little bit disturbing. I, cause yeah. I hadn't been introduced to this sort of thing before. Yeah. And obviously my dad was having none of it, like, a bit like Carl, and obviously my mum wasn't up for that as I- uh, But the person we went, the, the mother of the person we went with, <laughs> she, uh, she took her top off, and I was like, I was, I didn't, I, I didn't know where to look. Cause I didn't want to make an <laughs> issue of it, I didn't want to make, you know, I didn't want to, but it was like, cause I was with my mate, I was going, well, I was like to say, well there's your mum with her knockers out, really. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's your, that's your mum over there. Hello, Dave. Well, oh, 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 there, there's your mum's, there's your mum's, there's your mum's knockers. Um, oh, oh there you oh, go. Yeah. You've Oh, there's your dad. There's your dad popped out. Yeah, popped out. His he's little, got little the, man. His he's little got man. Fella. Um, his little fella out your there. Your dad's fella's there. He's wandering about. And, uh, <laughs> he's, he's having a. And your mum's got the. Uh, he's getting a the tan old, on his the little old fella. Milk is out. So um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it was all. Um, it was a little bit disturbing, and I've never quite got that that image out of my head really, because it was it was all. But I didn't know where to look. I didn't know my, um, what my, to do. A friend of mine. I won't say what his name is. Right. Um. Uh. He's about twenty five now. When he was, I think, fourteen and fifteen. I mean, the worst age. He went to a nudist holiday with his parents <laughs> and and his and his sister and some of her sister's friends and he absolutely hated it. Yeah, it absolutely. Well, that's it, I, 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 I. It, it makes me um, sort of queasy to think about yeah, it, especially yeah. if you're with your family and friends. Yeah, because it's. I don't mind looking at nudie ladies that I don't know, really, but I don't want to look at relatives, <laughs> you know, or people I've, gr I've grown up with, or <laughs> indeed the likes of you. I don't want to have to see that kind of flesh, and I don't want to. I don't want to know what's going on underneath those clothes. You know, oh, you're keeping them hidden from me. Well, you haven't. You've <laughs> you've shown me much of it <laughs> in the time I've known you. So sometimes there's I'm not. So do you know there's not a bit of your body I haven't seen at some point. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you'll have got your trousers down. Look at the arse. That was you know thinking that was hilarious, or the old you know yeah. the, uh, yeah, the Johnson um, feeding the the birds on the mm. windowsill. Mm. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, no, it is it is strange because there, you know there isn't there isn't anything wrong with it. Let's face it, there's nothing wrong with it. But um, I know what you mean. I think so it's because we spend so long. We spend so much of the time covering it up. You know, it's like in, it's like in the summer months when girls start wearing kind of short sleeve uh, t shirts or short skirts. You have blokes just going mental. <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think it's because we spend, women spend most of the year because it's so cold here, covered up, that men forget what's you under know, there. You know, and when, then when well, summer comes when, around, when they can't believe it. do actually just hang out of a car window or hang over scaffolding and say, get your tits out. Mm. I want to go, has that ever yeah, worked? Has it ever worked? Has, have you, and what's your success rate with that? In well, well I was off to my big job in the city, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I got 20 minutes. Why yeah. not? Shall I come up there or are you gonna come down? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh dear. Extraordinary. Oh. Right, what we got? What we got coming up? What we got coming up? Quick, keep them hooked. <laughs> well, you know, Rick, We've uh, got some songs and some more chat. There'll be some, uh, chitter chatter and, uh, there'll be some songs. We had an email last week from a fella, uh, calling himself Paul, I don't know if that's his real name. <laughs> he said that sometimes- I'm suspicious. <laughs> I'm already suspicious. <laughs> yeah. He said that some time ago we played a, a cracking Johnny Cash cover version of U2's oh, One. Oh, Remember that? Oh, I think yeah. maybe the last time you were here, Kennedy. Oh, class. Um, and he says, uh, he's, he's been trying to track down that album. He says, unfortunately, like an idiot, I didn't listen to it and I, I didn't catch the name of the album. Could you, by any chance, send me, uh, the album? He's having a laugh. He's having a laugh. <laughs> what for free? Yeah. So that's well, not going to happen. So, uh, actually, email him back. Say, Paul. Should I do it now? Give us, give us eight quid, for no reason. I've also, I've also called him some quite offensive names. <laughs> it's good though, I'll put uh, from Gervais. Oh dear, he's not going to yeah, like that. That's pretty grim. Nor's his mother. No, <laughs> he shouldn't have brought her into it. <laughs> Indeed. Johnny <laughs> Cash. Oh, I'm doing that. Johnny Cash. Change from a Durex machine. You get it? <laughs> oh, that's classic. Johnny Cash and his cover of uh, U2's One, magnificent tune. Um, that's from the album American Three, Solitary Man, that was released in 2000. And uh, I've just checked that email that Paul, if indeed that is his name, yes. sent us, Rick. And he didn't ask for a, a copy of the album, he right. asked for the name of the album. Right. So, um, I feel a little bit bad that I uh, <laughs> sent that email back insulting him and his mother. Yeah. Uh, and also, of course, I CC'd it to his mum, <laughs> as well, <laughs> yeah. and many of her friends. <laughs> so, Send um, another one. I feel, uh, I think we can get around this. I'll tell you what Paul would like if that is his If real indeed name. his name, yeah. He'd like some adverts, oh, he'd love he? some bloody adverts, Paul. <laughs> Oasis, Little by Little, on XFM 104.9. I'm just moving the mic there. Hold on, I'm getting comfortable. There you go. Right, sit up. I was laughing. A lot of people do that. that. A lot of people do that during the song. A lot yeah. of the old pros. <laughs> no, a lot of the old no, pros, like, like Foxy song. and Tarrant and the like. Oh, uh, um, uh, they were on, uh, Top of Pops yesterday, but they, um, they did, uh, My Generation. Any good? Yeah, very good. Mm. I mean, uh, you know. I was it, was it close to the original, or did they make yeah. it their own? No, it, 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 both. It was pretty close. They did, you know, musically it was close, but, you mm. know, they had a certain... Was it Noel singing, or Liam? Uh, Liam. Very, very cool. Very mm. cool. Good no, swagger. He's, he's attitude back. Yeah. I think back on form. Lot of people tell me though that so if you go to any of these big stadium gigs they do now, it's an absolute nightmare because a lot of the fans are really grim. I mean, I've spoken to two people independently who've both been at gigs where there have been fans weeing on other fans' shoes. That's not what I want from a that's gig. That's not nice. No, that's they not own good. them then. Well, yes, apparently. That's theirs, yeah. then. Oh, yeah. well, if you wee on something... Yeah, you own it. That's it. Cat yeah. law. Cat law. Cat law. Yeah, cat yeah. law is if you wee on <laughs> yeah. something, then you own it, yeah. yeah. I know you live by cat law. <laughs> yeah, I do, yeah. But you do live, because right. I, yeah, no, yeah. I've, my wallet I think you own. <laughs> yeah. And, um... Several telephone boxes. Yeah. Much um, of my hair. <laughs>
Um, uh, what were we talking about? We were talking about nudie beaches. Uh, yeah. Cause I just, I still can't get around the I don't know why they only play volleyball. No, that's all they do, don't Surely they? there's other games you could play. I think mm. French cricket would be slightly more. All the pictures I've ever seen of, uh, news colonies always seem to be quite attractive women and some r fairly grizzled sort of 45 year old men. I don't know if that's generally the clientele that, you know, it just happens to work that way. But I'm quite looking forward to getting to around the year 45 mark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just cruising down. Right. Right. Happy birthday. Right, I'm off. <laughs> exactly. Where are you going without your clothes? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And at what point, I mean, you can't, you can't go into a nudist colony, can you, without taking your clothes off? You can't. I, d I don't know if there's a, a door policy. <laughs> no, where there's sort of no I think there is, I'm sure. I'm oh, actually, no, because when I went on my nudist beach, there was actually a security guard. Stopping you from- Naked? No, no. <laughs> now, Claire, that's very would strange. it be possible for a bloke who was, say, a fairly good swimmer to swim up to the beach <laughs> in a wetsuit and not France. have to come- Okay, yeah. well, I <laughs> yeah. Let's say, just say for, for the sake of it that this person, you know, had some time on his hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, yeah. and he was, he'd, he'd made he'd, quite he'd, a bit of money. He'd train, he he'd train nine hours a day at the lengths in the pool, <laughs> yeah. thinking that if I, go, I can go, I can get, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to Eurostar to France. It exactly. could work, it could work, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what was your nudist beach experience? This was not a, this was not a colony. No, not no, a colony it just was a choice that this this place had a few beaches. One of them was a nudist beach. And could you, you see the nudist beach from the regular beach? No, you couldn't. You right. see, it was just around the. What corner. about with binoculars? <laughs> possibly, <laughs> <Okay>. yeah, possibly. <laughs> but you see, my 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 worry is as as um, a healthy young man. Yes, um, you're not if, a healthy young man, are you? No, no, but I'm talking about you two. You're right, sure. You're pretty healthy young men. Mm. How um. how awkward it must be for you on a nudist beach if you do happen to see a very good-looking naked lady mm. what you do if you mm. well that's the reason i that's the reason i've not gone to any okay Claire, just exactly that worry because it is very off-putting yes if you had you it sounds like this is a confession oh, it, exactly yeah on, that did happened? actually happen to us really? a, an older gentleman an older gentleman obviously was enjoying his time on the beach right explain more I and then quite... came over to chat and you just don't know where to sorry ha so hang on so he he approached you. Yeah, for a chat, as you do. People are friendly. Right, without wishing to get too lewd within a state of arousal. <laughs> <laughs> Is How that the far case? can we go down this? No, I'm not, I'm not, yeah. I'm not, I'm not trying to sort of, I don't want to get too kind of, you know, graphic. <laughs> Or gynecological. Have you noticed? Gynecological. Oh, I was going to say how how yeah. quiet Ricky was keeping. But so he this came point. over. He came over. Well, I'm worried about this. I'm <laughs> I'm worried about telling this story. But I think it's an interesting. I'm interested. I think yeah. this is an interesting point. Yeah. Because it's a. So he came over and he was just chatting away. Yeah. Quite proudly. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> eventually got quite proud. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And what was? Oh, why God. was this? Time? I mean, not wishing to be disrespectful, but you know, he's a I man. He's, he's been around a bit. Were you reading erotic poetry? <laughs> what were you? No. <laughs> I was talking about the weather. Right. About how nice it was today. And he tr he approached in pole position, or did he? <laughs> no. Oh, or, or did he? I don't like it anymore. Oh, Fine. Okay. God. I don't like it anymore. Right. Let's leave it then. Let's but that's leave what it. I did. I, I actually ran away. You ran away. That's I went swimming. Was he French? Was it was it quite tricky to speak to him? Oh no, no, he spoke perfect English. Sorry, right. uh, during the during the break, <laughs> like Claire said, oh, 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 well, I switch ones, right? And this man came over, uh, an old fella. Um, and, uh, and she started off, I said, he had the biggest knob I've ever seen. <laughs> and then I laughed, and then she went, and then he, then it no, got bigger. And no. I went, you can't tell it then. I was worried about that. But she left out the funny bit and just went, you just went all <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, play Bob worry. Dylan. Only Bob Dylan can get us out of this. Uh, this is off, um, his, uh, his last album, uh, Love and Theft. It is the only track I really like, I'm afraid. I didn't get on with the rest of the album because it was too, it was too hoedowny and country blues and stuff, which is, it's just not my sort of thing. But this is a, this is a nice track called Mississippi. Bob Dylan. Mississippi. Um, off, uh, off the album Love and Theft. Uh, I must admit, not, not my favourite Dylan album, but, um, that's a nice track, isn't it? It's a lovely track, actually. I just noticed there you've, uh, you've brought in three CDs. Yeah. Um, you bring those three in every week, don't you? <laughs> you just play from those three CDs? Or, 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 well, you substitute the Dylan for different Dylan albums. Yeah. And the other so two remain the same. Well, no, I've got, no, I've got them playing a different, uh, different cut Stevens. I've got T for Tillerman. I've never brought that in before. You see that? I've no, seen it before. No, I've never brought in, I've never played anything off T for Tillerman. I've played it off, uh, Catch Bullet 4, Teaser in the Fire Cat. Um, Do but you, you don't have a sort of deal with Island Records to try and keep that <laughs> Cat Stevens no, back Jimmy catalog Webb. afloat? <laughs> <laughs> no one's really shifting it. <laughs> I think it might just be CDs that are in the bottom of a bag. This is why I'm, I'm thinking, so lazy. Yeah, it's just you've got I'm one carrier bag that you bring back and Exactly. Sure. Yeah. 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 Well, we'll look forward to those later. Yeah, go yeah. on. No, 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 no. I was just, I was just really wondering, Rick, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but could I have some adverts? Yeah. Feeder. 
come back around on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Hello there, Steve Merchant here. Of course you are. And, uh, and, and so is Claire Sturgis in a way. <laughs> <laughs> That's true enough. So... That's true enough. Yeah. Um, Rick, uh, oh, I parted till it was- t I parted last night, Rick, like it was 1999. Really? Uh, all over again. Sort of old-fashioned sort of way, some yes. old records. Yes, yeah. yes, okay. yes. On my own. <laughs> <laughs> In my flat, crying. <laughs> just like 1999. Yeah, just like 1999. Now, uh, I went to see Prince at the, oh, yeah. uh, at the Hammersmith oh. Apollo, and I'll tell you this, I mean, if that's a man whose career is going down the pan, then I'm sorry. Then, then I hope ours does. Then I hope ours does as excitingly as that. <laughs> does. <laughs> because did. he was stunning. I yeah. mean, he is, I d a lot of people I know have seen him in the, in the, in the eighties or whatever and he's, when he used to descend from a ceiling in a, a little I red know. Corvette and stuff, but he is breathtaking. He is I, like, I th I he's he like was... what it must have been to see Elvis Presley. Well, I yeah, really no, know, no, I've not I, seen I, anyone who's electrifying on stage. I mean, I, I think like most people had a bit too much for him and that wasn't because he's, it was going downhill. It's because he churned out double albums like most people churn out singles and you don't know what you should you can't take like, it all in. I, there was just too much. Yeah. I didn't like the, you know, the, the sort of the end of the 80s phase either too well, much. Well, that whole period when he was fi fighting with Warner Brothers and he was, he started wearing masks. And, and and got, I think everyone just thought, I'm not interested. Yeah. You know, you're, you're potty. But, but he's gonna come out the other side of that and tracks, um. Great tracks great pop tunes and he's written so, you know, I think well, he's I, brilliant. I mean, I, you know, I don't bandy this word around Rick as you know. Go on. But I'd like to use the word genius. I thought you were gonna say I'll pay for that. No, 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 no. Genius. Oh, wow. Genius. I, cause I would the say- That's a strong word, Steve. That's a strong, strong word. Rick. It is a Can strong word. Can you back it up? Have you got any, any example of his work that we could play now on XFM to show that he is a genius? I, well, I will in just one second. Thanks for asking. But, um, <laughs> can I, can I try and justify that? Can I just, cause it is a controversial phrase yeah. to use. Um, Prince is a genius. And yeah. let me tell you why. On his first album, or maybe on a couple of his first albums, he played all the instruments. Brilliant. Like Squidly Diddly. <laughs> exactly. In, in one episode of that I saw. He, he was it, playing bad. the piano. Diddly was Excuse playing the piano me. with his two tentacles. But then he was like playing drums with two tentacles at the back. He was standing on two tentacles which was the other one free for trumpet. That so, sounds like genius to me. Yeah. Oh, That's what Mr. Prince. So, the only thing I would say about the concert last night, three hours, he played for three hours yeah. non-stop, well yeah. almost three hours, non-stop, didn't take a break. A cracking band, only five minutes. I'm actually taking a break, just reading the paper, having yeah. a coffee. <laughs> going, what are you looking at? And also very I've got witty. 20 minutes, by very law. <laughs> very witty as well, because a lot of people imagine him being quite dry and quite sober. It was, yeah. it was very funny. But, sadly, Prince now, well, I don't mean to be offensive, but, but as so far small. as I'm concerned, what? he, you know he's now a Jehovah's Witness. Is he's he? now a Jehovah's Witness. So and he's gonna come round tonight? Well, no, but at the end, he did sort of spout on about, uh, you know, his beliefs. Yeah. Uh, and I felt a bit like I'd sort of, do you know what I mean? Like I'd sort of paid 40 quid and I'd queued up and I'd sat for three you hours to then, quid. to then be, to then be preached at a little bit. So that was anything that, to, to put well, that Well, I'll tell you what, good job for him. He was good value because he'd have got an earful from you if he did. <laughs> oh. Imagine if he'd not played the singles exactly. or only did like 20 minutes. Yeah. Well, I'd have been livid. <laughs> I'd have <just> stormed out. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> Um, uh, but, um, but I did, cause so I don't know Prince, when So, you've had, uh, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, Steve Merchant says, Prince is a genius. This is XFM 104.9, coming up to two o'clock. <laughs> Prince is a genius. Can we open the phone lines, please? What's the phone, uh, number there, Claire? 08700 800 1234. Me and my mate were talking about when people say genius, and they do bandy it around willy-nilly, and it's sort of like, um, a, a, a comedian or something, they go, he's a genius. And we think that there's, there's people in cancer research sort of laboratories and AIDS, and they're going, <sighs> We lost another one to ITV. <laughs> yeah, Why yeah. didn't he go into science? <laughs> he could have been the new Newton, but now he's getting the ratings up for five. <laughs> exactly. So, but, yeah. but Prince is a genius. Uh, is he? Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk if you'd like to email. <laughs> <laughs> Prince, genius, or little fella! <laughs> it's up but, to um, you! But when you are a Jehovah's Witness, I don't know, I don't know much about the, uh, the faith. But, um, right. you are go... you, are you obliged when you sign up to sort of do your time going door to door? Because it would be I amazing, think... imagine Prince turning up at your door and just, hi, oh, can I come in? Well, or oh, no. <laughs> And it, you know, and just coming in and, uh, well, I'll sing you some of the hits, but I'd like you to buy a copy of this afterwards. I'm not really interested. Why are they Which ones are you gonna play? Which ones are you gonna play? I'm not a big fan of, I don't like, uh, if I was your girlfriend. And anything from Diamonds and Pearls I'm not interested in, so shoot off. Yeah. I quite like- I thought they were gonna start selling the Watchtower at the end. the most beautiful- I like that one. Yeah. Well, all those, the, those fat people in it. Does it make him a, does it make him a genius? Oh, call up one zero two three five nine six four two nine. Prince, genius, or bloke with hair? <laughs> <laughs> well, this has got to be proof of his, of his genius. One, he played it last night and it's just dynamite. One, yeah, it's two, Strawberry Scar. <laughs> Prince, of course, and Raspberry Beret, one of the tunes he played last night, and, uh,
breathtaking. I have to say, I can't sing his praises enough. Although, uh, didn't manage to get myself into the after show party, where Prince is often renowned for playing with the likes of- <laughs> <laughs> Jamming <laughs> with the likes of uh, Rolling Stones. What, what, what would have been your, uh, your approach to Hello get there, in? Uh, Steve Merchant here at XFM, Ricky Gervaisia. Um, any chance <laughs> I could come in <laughs> to um, your- Party. To your party, please. Uh, I'll be honest, um, uh, can I, can I call you Lanky? Well, if it helped me get in, yeah. Um, it, it, it won't, but thank you anyway. I'll be honest, Lanky, your chances are slim to none, four eyes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I, I enjoyed the concert, if that is any- Okay. I'm, I could talk I'm, about it on the radio. I could talk about it on the radio I'm gonna take away that slim. Okay. It's none now, <laughs> <right>. freak. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So go away, yeah? <laughs> Cheers. Okay. Oh. Was it something like that? <laughs> it was not dissimilar, it. <laughs> there was a lot more profanity last night. <laughs> and, um, and punches were thrown. Was it last night? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, it was breathtaking. I, um, how's it working out for you, Rick? How's it working out for you being a celeb? How is that working out? How's that panning out for you? Is that all right? Is that working all right, Rick? Is it? Hey, all the fame and everything. I was, I was, I was David Bowie on Tuesday. I read about that. Why, why did I have to, why did I have to read about your presence at the David Bowie gig in the Evening Standard? Why do you keep that from right, me? Okay. Why do you keep that from me? Right, okay. Right, I know what you're thinking. I got an invite, it was free business. Because I, didn't I discussed you. this in the past. I said yeah, if you get no. invited to David Bowie or any of the big name yeah. concerts, I gotta go as well. That's the right, rule. That's right. The rule is that we make the TV show, you're in the show, you become famous fine, yeah. but I need to be able to also get the benefits of that. Well, I didn't go. Was- did you read this in the standard? Yes, I did. Yeah, no. It said- Well, I- I, I it was in the paper, It I was know, in the paper. It said present at the concert. It's absolutely true. I'm not- I'm not bullshit uh, pre- Absolutely true. Um, in the concert were Ricky Gervais and uh, Jonathan Ross. Now, we were invited, but we- we couldn't go. Neither of us could go. So right. they just- I just think they must have seen a copy of the guest list or someone said they were coming kind of like, Or they just guessed. But I didn't go. I couldn't go. So there you go. It was Wednesday and I couldn't go. If I'd have gone, you'd have been there, mate. Rubbish. <laughs> Because what worries me is yeah. that you what, you you were invited or or you requested tickets and then you didn't go. No, no. Um, what happened was that the um, uh, Bowie's uh, people just said that you coming to the concert tonight, and I I I, I said I I couldn't. But, but let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Wait to, a minute to get you off this track, right? The next night we did go to dinner with Bowie at someone's house. Well, look, wait, right, listen, it was a very, it was a small affair, it was, it was, um, me and Jane, Jonathan, uh, and Jane, it was, um, David, uh- First names. Yeah, no, no, and, uh, it, I think it was it, it, old friends of the family, it was a, it, a beautiful house, and, um, it was just us lot, and, um, Richard E. Grant and, uh, Pete Townsend and Charles Sarchi and that, and it was just, just, you know, I think it was, it's, <coughs> and it was set places as well, so I couldn't have got another- it was weird, because we got there, we- I mean, it said 8 for 8.30, and I got there at like 5 past 8, and Jane went, we can't go too early. And we went in there, and we, um, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the servants, um, got, gave us a, a, a drink, and we were standing there, and I was looking around, it was an amazing house, it was a beautiful house, and there's Damien Hurst paintings and Lucian Freud, and I thought, well, when the host comes in, I'm gonna go, you didn't tidy up for us, did you? But I was actually so overwhelmed, and, uh, in through the door, let himself into the door, was Richard E. Grant, and I went, all right. He went, yeah, I'm Richard. I went, yeah, all right. And, uh, I, I went, just, just let yourself in. He went, yeah, I live next door. I went, oh, okay. And then, uh, and then David Bowie came in and he came over and spoke to me and he's, he went, I've just seen your video and, uh, uh and then, um, this isn't helping, is it? Cause you're, you, you, th- this isn't helping. Well, when you, I mean, the phrase I, I was just gonna pick you up there on was, I've just seen your video. <laughs> um, cause, cause what, what, no, I just feel that what, <laughs> no, I, sh- no, just, just for a second. <laughs> what, what I feel, what I feel that David should know <laughs> is that it wasn't made sort of solely by you, no, or, or no. written entirely by you, or directed entirely no, by you. No. It, it happens to feature you amongst a, a myriad of other actors, all of whom are brilliant and equally worthy of an invite. Uh, yeah. to that particular dude. Yeah. But, but you'll notice that, that the person that's representing the show, what got you a pl- place around this table, you know, it's the one person that was invited, is you. Yeah. Just, just you, just you. Yeah. Well, there's a very good reason And the woman, what you know, who wasn't involved with the uh, show. Your well, girlfriend. Well, your partners, you got, you know, that, that's well, it. It's, it's, yeah, it's, but it's, once again, she could have stayed at home. <laughs> you could have gone up Hello? <laughs> 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 well, I did actually say, if ever I get invited to see Woody Allen, 
and it, it's the two people that it would have to be you and Jane that went because you're both bigger fans than me. And yeah. I, I promised that, and uh, so um, she went along with that. So David but, enjoyed the show, did he? <laughs> he did, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, he did, yeah. And uh, and how did the evening pan out? Was it suitably rock and roll? Um, it was very nice. It was really nice. A pleasant. F um, what did you have to friends. eat? Um, I had. Uh, it, there was nibbles sort of coming round, nice. and then um, yeah. they fed you the food, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you. I bet they fed you the food. <laughs> and then um, we had. Uh, um, oh, what was it? Oh, what was for starter? Um, oh, it was like a, a ravioli thing for starter. I thought I won't have too much. I filled up the, for the fish dish. The fish was lovely. Then there was a sort of chestnut mousse. And what did you talk about with David Bowie? Um, just you know, you know, uh, music. Yeah, music. Y you appearing on his next album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, what seriously? What? Because I'm interested to know. It was, it was really nice. He's re he's really so nice and normal. And uh, he actually came over and it, he said, I've, "I've just seen your video." And yeah, the, and then he went. He said, "Are you going to get the band back together?" <laughs> he meant he'd seen the Room 101, and right. uh, he was basically taking the Mickey out of me. Mm. Mm. And he was going, "No, I thought it was really good." Uh, and because uh, uh, <laughs> uh, you were just a sort of Bowie ripoff, exactly, thing, you, essentially. Yeah. And yeah. And um, no, it was, it was really, really nice and normal affair. I, I, uh, seriously, it was just really. I mean, I was going, "Oh my God, they're so and so, they're so and so." Yeah. Um, but it was really, re we really enjoyed it. It was really pleasant, and uh, everyone was, you know. And at the end, um, uh, the, the 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 people whose house it was, was a friends of his, like a lot of sort of really old friends of his, got out a photo album just like you do, and those pictures of like David Bowie. And, uh... Dave, yeah, sure. Well, no, I mean, that's the thing about Iggy DB Pop. is he's, he's... No, no, and, and Iggy Pop when they're cooking, and, and Dave was always sort of going, look at Iggy cooking. And he yeah. was laughing like you do a mate you haven't seen. It was yeah. so sweet. It was just so nice. And then, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna see, uh, we, uh, the play record, Claire, because yeah. he's actually a little bit annoyed with me, play record. Then Robert De Niro popped in. <laughs> yeah. And it all got a bit depressing. And Woody Allen. Yeah. And he went, do you know anyone that likes my work <laughs> more than you do? Know I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. Coral. Dreaming of You on yeah. XFM 104.9. I'm yeah, one of the, uh, one of the only tunes on the album I think worth listening to. I haven't heard it. Oh, it's rubbish. Is it really? But everyone's singing its praises like they're the saviours of British rock, but it just sounds like the inspiral well, carpets, and I don't mean that as a good thing. We were- <laughs> <laughs> Skeleton <laughs> know, key I, as well, Steve That's not too bad, yeah, yeah but the rest is- right. I think it's not- I think it's more sort of like 19, sort of 78, 79, sort of those- Mm. I don't know what that means, Rick. <laughs> well, I, I don't think it, I don't think I ripped off the nineties. I think old hat, you mean? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. like it. Let so me just return very briefly to your oh uh, your um. God. No, I don't. I, I'm not going to embarrass you, but uh, just returning very quickly to your uh, your dinner date with uh, David Bowie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what what intrigued me, as you said, is that when you um. No, it wasn't. It wasn't because of the office. It was through um. The, uh, I think because oh, I met him with Jonathan Ross. Sure, no, but times, what, what, what I thought was interesting is you people he'd met over this time. Cause I think he was going back to America. Of course, but it, I love the fact you say that uh, he came over to you and said, um, I saw your tape last night. Yeah. I just like the idea that people are sort of saying, hey, you'll be having uh, lunch tomorrow with uh, Ricky Gervais. I don't know who that is. Well, uh, there's a tape, watch yeah. that, and you'll be able to engage in some kind of vision. He's a minor celebrity here in Britain. He's, uh, had a relatively successful TV show, but we think he's a bit of a one-trick pony. Probably won't be able to repeat that success, so, uh, probably won't need to be eating with him in the next five years, but be polite tomorrow. Uh, he was a big fan of yours. Uh, he used to embarrass himself in the 80s, uh, doing a sort of vague pastiche of you, and, um, other than that, there's not much else to say, really. Uh, just be polite to him, and then, uh, move on. Okay, who else has got- you know, it's just sort of- yeah. it's very odd that he was given a tape. It's like someone, uh, you know, if you were doing a, a chat show, you imagine Michael Parkinson would be given a tape. I know, yeah. Just- just watch this, David. Oh, actually, he's, I think he's been a fan for a long time. <laughs> oh, what? I, th I think he's followed my career from the 80s. Sure. No, yeah. I- uh, yeah, the, uh, when you put it like that, it's not as flattering, is it? It's very but odd. he was very nice and very polite, and, uh, we got on like a house on fire. Sure. No, he's great. Did he's you do really your impression funny. of him? No, of course I did. Did you not? Did you feel like the urge to snap into it just occasionally? Uh, and I didn't. I didn't. I was just going. That's David Bowie. That. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah. that's still David Bowie. <laughs> that's David Bowie talking to me now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's David Bowie talking to me yeah, now, yeah, yeah that looks yeah. like David Bowie. Yeah, yeah. That was what was going through my head. Yes. And we're talking about his songs, and like, that was bizarre. Mm. It was- it was quite surreal, and uh, you know, and I do know a lot about his stuff, cause I- I mean, yeah. he really- he- I mean, he's quite a musical hero of mine. Yeah. And that- so it was- You didn't- you didn't mention Tin Machine. I didn't mention Tim Machine. Because I'd just no. be there just thinking, don't mention Tim Machine, don't mention Tim Machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't even bring it up, don't even, see, don't, don't even say you like it, because you think, don't know what he feels about it. You see, I think if people listen to this show, they go, don't invite Steve Merchant, because he's insulting. <laughs> He insults people, he sends emails to people when he reads them wrongly. Yeah. He, he'll, br <laughs> he'll bring up a period of your life you don't want to talk about. Yes. Get the little short fat one. He's, he's, he's a lot more polite. Sure. 
Leave out the lanky yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they probably wouldn't say lanky, Rick. Th they don't know what I look like because <laughs> they listen to me on the radio. <laughs> I, don't th I think they're insulting. They might say, oh, you know, West Country, oik, or something. Yeah. But. Uh, who was yeah. it I was listening to? So, some, yesterday, there was someone had a, um, a Bristol accent. Fascinating. And no, but no, I think, oh yeah, it was, um, one of those, uh, um, the Fame Academy. Disappointing, but I think you'd have to get into it. Um, bit of a shambles at the moment, but I mean, no, there's no investment, I didn't know them. And one of them had a Bristol accent, and I just thought, it really is a stupid accent. What have we got lined up, <laughs> Claire? <laughs> what have we got? Well, a bit of John Spencer blues Oh, explosion. I love this, I love this. Yeah. This is an old All classic right. I uh, brought in today, and I think you'll enjoy it. Hello. Um, don't even start on that, Rick. There's so much I could attack you about. <laughs> I mean, look at you, look Wait. at you, you're laughable. <laughs> John, John Spencer Blues oh, Explosion. Oh, you do it. Well, Sorry. no, I, I, you know, I just thought I would. Yeah. On account of, I brought it in. And then someone was complaining that we speak over each other. Yeah, we had an email saying, uh, we gabbled too much. And, and we, we, and we both went, I don't think we do. Yeah. <laughs> Did you say that? I didn't hear you. I was talking at the time. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, right Place, Wrong Time by John Spencer. Yeah. Good. I don't, I, yeah, I don't mm. We also had an email <laughs> you didn't enjoy it? You didn't enjoy nah. it? No, 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 no. Um, uh, we uh, also uh, had an email uh, saying, uh, nah. again, uh, no, go on. I won't, uh, uh, this, go on. Sorry. No, no, you- You can see why that would annoy me. I know. You can see why that might annoy me. Take your headphones off then, cause that's, it must be louder in your headphones, cause I don't wear headphones. No. I'm not so much thinking of me as the people listening at home. Okay. The people who pay our I wages. Think, go on then. It, we had an email that said, uh, <laughs> but I, d I don't know who's the victor in this, Rick. I don't know who's winning with you making that noise. But what, you're the only person who's enjoying it. <laughs> But well, yeah, I only do this for my. But there's a handful of people listening. Whose 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 Saturdays, Rick, are empty. They've got nothing. Okay. They're running on empty, and this okay. is all they've got. Okay. And they they they, they want conversation. Okay. They want well, an what are you going to say then? It depends if it's interesting or not. Well, let me say it before you make the judgment. Okay. So, let, all right. What about this? If you don't like, if it's not interesting, then you make the noise. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So this is just. Uh, we had an email. Right. It said, "Is Claire Sturgis drunk when she does the show?" <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, that was a real email. I've, I've lost it now. But, really? um, so does that warrant the noise, or? No, that's right. That's okay. quite interesting, that's, yeah. yeah. quite interesting. No, email. she's not. No, she's not drunk, is she? A bit coked <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. Yeah, just It's a bit not true. The old Charlie. No, <laughs> not true at all. No, you don't, you don't do drugs, do you? Claire, you're not no, into drugs, are you? No, no, no. Yeah, we, you're we, clean now. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did that out. go for you, the detox? It was yeah. great. <laughs> Mainly thanks to you two. Yeah. The support at least, you don't, at least you don't have to steal so much now to, exactly. to feed yeah. the habit. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Are there any drug addicts on this station? No, not anymore. No. But you, because I bet there are. I mean, you don't have to name names, but what mm. about initials? <laughs> <laughs> are, there, are there any skag eggs? Any, any smackheads at all? <laughs> Seriously. Because <laughs> I'm intrigued. Not anymore, no. Can you tell me off air who's, who's a drug off addict? Off air, I'll be happy to tell you. you there are some more. Yeah, there were. Not anymore. What do you mean they're what, what they got? No, they weren't. <laughs> the, stop this. Are there any people who like, no. they think that they've got it under control? <laughs> but they yeah, haven't exactly. really. <laughs> it is. Yeah. There are some, aren't they? They, go in, they think that no one will notice, but they've got no pupils. Yeah. <laughs> and they just stare at you for ages and go, what? At the end of each sentence. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's a couple of drunkards, I know, but there's no. <laughs> it's boring now? Okay, play a record. It's boring. <laughs> Richard Jay's telling us it's boring. Queens of the Stone Age. There. Yeah. No one knows. It's going well. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. 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 Adverts or what? Um. What do you reckon? <laughs> He's loving them. Getting away with it from Electronic, of course. Fantastic right. tune. Yeah. No, it's That's a beautiful. That's a mutual favourite of ours. We, we both like that, don't we, Steve? We do indeed. We yes. Both like that. We are mutually appreciative of that track. Richard yeah. Gervais, of course. Friend of the stars. <laughs> Claire Sturgis is here. My name's Steve Merchant. Ahoy. Yeah, XFM 104.9. So, uh, I um, saw you the other day, cause I, I haven't seen you this week, but I did see you, uh, walking down the street holding a gum shield that you just bought. How'd that work out for you, the, uh, the boxing? Oh, it was really good. Cause like, we talked about, are you aware of this, Claire, that he wants to become a boxer? <laughs> this is something that Ricky talked about the other week on the, on the air. He <laughs> no, suddenly yes. decided at the age of 40 something that, uh, boxing is really good. Well, the no, hold on. Well, 40 something means 47. <laughs> I'm just 41. Okay. I am 40 something, but, uh, 40 summer is like a euphemism for near a 50. Yeah. So don't say 40 something. Okay. Say 30 something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. yeah, he's taking up, but apparently there's something called white collar boxing. Claire. Yeah. Did we mention this last week? No, you didn't, no, but I, I didn't know something about it. I think you mentioned it yeah, before, he, um, last week. He white collar boxing. Yeah, it's, it's basically, yeah. it's like a kind of, it's like an, uh, a classier version of Fight Club. <laughs> the film <laughs> Fight yeah, Club, have you ever seen that? Yeah. So, yeah. um, it's sort of, they don't meet in sort of dingy cellars, they no. meet in what, office blocks? Or? And it's usually for charity at the Grosvenor or something, or a big hotel, I don't know, and, uh, you just have a, like a bill on there and, uh, and, uh, you 
punch each other. <laughs> For charity. Serious? Yeah. But anyway, I've been training. I've been training <laughs> boxing for for a while now, just like, you know, the pads and everything. And last week we started on, uh, sparring and it is a different level. Honestly, I mean, I can work out now for an hour on the pads and I did about one and a half rounds and it was like I was asthmatic. Because you're also, the trainer, who is a, who's a, you know, a, a boxer himself, put the gum shoe and he goes, okay, I'm not gonna, and I was giggling with fear. I was giggling with fear. And he said, you've got to get a gum shield just in case. And that's where he saw me. I'd, I'd gone to the Lonsdale shop. And I got a, a gum shield. I just, I, I said this before, Claire, is that I just don't think it's a good idea. I mean, you know Ricky, you've known him for a while, yeah. now. He's not, he's not mentally tough, which yeah. is a problem, I think. You're not, he's not, sort of, psychologically he's quite, un, he's quite weak. <laughs> like, he's scared of a lot of things, you know, <laughs> cars. Spiders. Um, I mean, he'll get, I, I've seen, yeah. like, edgy, like, if a car blows its horn and he's in the house. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And he'll hear it outside, you know, eh, what's that? Is it coming through the door? Is it? <laughs> No, it's right, Rick. We're, we're on the eighth floor, <laughs> and it's across town. It's fine. Don't worry. I don't like crossing roads. No, he can't. I mean, I've I never like seen around so carefully. On the motorway, if uh, someone's going the motorway, well, I'm looking at the speedo, and if it's like 86, uh, 76, I'm going. Well, let, you know, just let's go in the slow lane. And I'm looking. My eyes like saucers, <laughs> just taking in all the information. Yeah, and, yeah. Because you can't drive. That's as well. That's a rational fear, though, isn't it? R roads but I think are scary. it's because you can't drive. Yeah. Possibly, so, for instance, yeah. the fact that you, you know, I've seen. I mean, here, actually, you clear because I can't drive, and I do exactly the same yeah, thing on motorways. Yeah, so that's all right. Yeah. But do you? But do you do this, Claire? Which is when you're in the back of a cab, <laughs> and you feel the cab's going too fast, despite the fact that you're say driving up Shaftesbury Avenue in rush hour. <laughs> yeah. So you're never going to pick up a great deal of speed. Yeah. But Ricky will. He won't mention it to the driver. I feel you're going a bit too fast. He'll whisper it to me. No, he's see, basically suggesting that, no. to me that I should that I should say something. Because <laughs> I'm Ricky Gervais off the telly, I don't want to cause a fuss. You better do it, Steve, because you're nobody. <laughs> That's basically what he's no, insinuating. Roads, roads so I've always got to sort of make the complaint, or yeah. I've got, you know. And but uh, you're terrified of, yeah, you're terrified of, um, of that. You're terrified of spiders, as we know. Yeah. Um, cobwebs. <laughs> It's well, that's of rational, pictures of spiders. That's, there's no smoke without fire. <laughs> yeah. I know who made those webs, Steve, <laughs> and they live there. Yeah, it was you that yeah. got the certificate, wasn't it, raised on the Spider-Man film. <laughs> 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 so they couldn't show the trailer before, you know, you'd gone to bed. <laughs> Are you scared I, of Spider-Man? Does although, he tell uh, No, I'm not scared of Spider-Man, no, I'm not scared of anything. Uh, but I got, I quite, I uh, used to the, uh, you know in I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here? That one that kept walking off the stream, I got, quite got used to him, I got, got to know him. Harry Geller? <laughs> Yeah, he yeah. was alright. Yeah. Yeah, he was alright. So you're, you're scared of that? Tarantulas and, um, aren't as scary as the bath ones. Tarantulas are sort of like more furry. But, but um, what about these, cause you know these programs where they have, they'll have people on and they'll kind of, they'll, they'll sort of, like I saw a show once where it was about phobias and a woman was terrified of dogs and a psychologist kind of got her to spend some time with the dog yeah. and slowly, you've, you've got no urge to sort of try and have that, that therapy done and so you can maybe deal with your, uh, your, which is basically, let's be honest, uh, a, a woman's <laughs> concern. <laughs> it's a, it's a woman's fear, like, isn't it, essentially. <laughs> that I stand on a chair. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, no, but I saw one, um, what's that one, um, he's really nice, he's not Jerry Springer, he's really nice and he has, you know, weird people on it. What's is it? Montel uh, Williams? No, no. Montel Jordan? No. <laughs> about 50. Um, this could Maury, uh, Maury. Yeah, Ma Maury Povich. Maury Povich. Yeah. yeah. Is it, he's the one without glasses, isn't he? Yeah. Who cares? Yeah, so you saw Maury Povich. Yeah, and there was like these women on there, right? And the, you know, sort of, you know, trailer trash. And uh, they were going, you're scared of snakes, aren't you? And then a woman would go on a snake and she'd be screaming, knocking things over. And, uh, okay, well, that's not doing anyone any good. <laughs> really. Yeah. But that's just for the audience to prove my point that she's terrified. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it was like tinfoil, and someone brought on millions of bags of tinfoil, and she was screaming, what, hugging. She was him. scared of tinfoil? Yeah, that's worse, isn't it? Scared of tinfoil is pretty mad. Yeah, well, there's, I mean, it's, it's irrational. You, you I can't know somebody who's, who's afraid but of buttons. See, buttons. Yeah, you, anything. Afraid of buttons. Yeah, afraid there's some of weird going on in your head, isn't it? It's uh, some sort of but, weird symbolism. But I, so. un I understand the snake, uh, the snake one or the spider one because I understand, you know, there are poisonous spiders and snakes. Well, but, it also, but it tin also foil could be sort of like buttons? chemical memory. Yeah, that could be, you know, but it's usually some, you know. Um, but how do you, because I don't know, I, that, see, yeah, because I don't have any irrational fears, yeah. particularly. Well, don't, I, don't, I, yeah, don't, don't confuse except, uh, except when you're with... flatulent. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm terrified of, because yeah. you never know when it's gonna spring, because he's not got any of the social graces, Ricky. He'll just think it's funny to just pass wind, <laughs> you know, dinner. I don't imagine he did it during dinner with Bowie, but if I'm having lunch with him, oh, it's just, because he'll just start grinning, and you know it's on the, <laughs> you know it's on the way, Claire. You know there's something in the post when Ricky starts just, when a little kind of, when his lips curl up, you're having lunch maybe, here it comes, here it comes. Uh, and it is, I'll tell you, it is eye-watering stuff, I mean it's intense. Oh, tell that story when you're on the, um, the train. There is, the, there is only one smell that is worse than Ricky Gervais' flatulence. I was on a train once and, um, 
a dog was on- a guy was on there with his dog, and the dog <laughs> passed wind, right? I don't know what he'd been feeding it, like <laughs> sheep or something. <laughs> You know, cattle. He must have been feeding it some- you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> intestines or something. It was intense. This smell pervades the carriage. You know, cause they're all like air- they're all kind of air conditioned or they're, yeah. they're tight so there's- there's nowhere for the, the smell to escape. So it's just- it's just kind of spreading, like, in this kind of invisible <laughs> sort of stench that fills up the carriage. I tell you, people's eyes were bleeding. Do you know what I mean? It was like, that's how- but it was just- it was unbelievable. I felt like my face was melting, like that bit at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> that was how it felt, right? And the bloke, who was obviously a bit embarrassed, said, uh, oh, oh, I don't know sometimes. I don't, I don't know, uh, I don't know who's worse, you know, with their flatulence, you know, people or dogs. And I wanted to go, I've got an idea! <laughs> how about dogs? <laughs> what about your dog? <laughs> it was I unbelievable. Know. But it's that, try, let's try and make a joke of it. No, get off the train at the next stop. <laughs> It was just, I mean, oh, I mean, I don't like people with dogs anyway, just generally. You know, you'll see people- oh. walk, No, Rick, when you see people walking down the road with dogs, and they just let a dog, you know, do its- its ones or its twos on the side of the road, oh, and then they just walk on. I just don't know what that is. No, it's you're like, not meant to. It's that's wrong, it's, yeah, No, but so. it is wrong, and it really winds me up, because you'll see people, it'll be like old ladies, or kind of toffs, <laughs> or something like that, and they were the sort of people that will complain about, you know, bad language on TV, yeah. or youths, you know, or ne'er-do-wells hanging out by bus shelters, yeah. but as soon- but they're happy for their dogs to, you know, go crapping on the sidewalk. <laughs> it really- it, they anger me, people with dogs <laughs> who just are irresponsible like that. <laughs> you yeah, know I, what I mean? agree. Well, that's nothing to do with liking dogs, is it? That, again, that- that's- Arrogance of people who think it's But there are right. a lot of people, as I say, who are kind of, who, you know what I mean, who think they're better than- they don't have to worry. They don't have to bend down and scoop it up. I know. Which is what they should do. Yeah. Anyway. Well, that's- I got uh, that off my chest. Yeah. <coughs> Play a record. <coughs> you two, Electrical Storm, they've done it again. I thought that is beautiful, that track. I know you used to disrespect you I two. I just didn't like them for ten years, and then, uh, all that you can't leave behind came out, and I, I sort of thought, well, I could have been wrong, and that's brilliant. So Rick, you know earlier I mentioned uh, you, uh, Prince, and yeah. we asked the question, "Is Prince a genius or yeah. not?" We've had a lot of response, What's mainly the by, by, by email. Interesting, Rick. Some people think he is, and some people think he isn't. Oh, yes. Mm. Well, this this debate a rage on. Can we have some <laughs> adverts? Well, in the last half hour, Steve, they've heard they've heard Nirvana, they've heard. Um, Oasis, they've heard great, th they've heard Dylan, we've got coming up, we've got Cat Stevens, we've got Tom Waits, you know yeah. what I mean? Now- It's great music. We're playing a lot of music and talking less in the last bit. Now some people, right, would say that's because we run on empty and we ran out of things to say at twenty past the first hour. Yeah. Right? I say actually we want to get in some great tracks. <laughs> well that's my excuse as well. What's next? Cat Stevens off Tea for the Tiller Man. I've got nothing, Steve. You're running, I, I know. Well it's the noise, I think it's the noise uh, was um, the, the noise point. Is it the noise? The, the noise was really noise. Cat Stevens from Teeth the Tiller Man. So many people, Rick, haven't even got a Cat Stevens record in their collection. And you hear tunes like that, you you just think. Do you why? Know what I think of them? You think why? I think why, Rick. So we just had we just had someone phoning up saying um, they want a bit of uh, psychedelic furs, and Claire said, oh, "What's your favourite track?" And we both went, "It'd be pretty in pink." Of course, and it was. Yeah. But you know, you know, you meant to say um, uh, like a uh, like on heart or magic. You're told to say coming up a classic by so and so, and people stay. Watch it in case it's their favourite, and if it's not, you don't give that away. But it doesn't work when it's things like I hear things all the time, like a uh, and uh, after this, uh, a classic from Men at Work. <laughs> That'll be down under <laughs> yeah. then. Yeah. Coming up next, a beautiful tune by Danny Wilson. Mary's prayer. It's <laughs> Mary's <laughs> yeah, prayer. Exactly. It can only be Mary's prayer. Yeah. No. So it, it doesn't work with those that uh, they've had one hit. Yeah. Or a tune from uh, Hearsay. Oh, I hate them all. Nice. You're like, like rock oh, and roll come on, that. Steve. We don't kick them when they're down. Yeah, it's true enough. God, what other pop that do thing, we hate? You know that thing, um, um, yeah. Oh, no, we all hate pop music, don't we? That's yeah. why we're alternative station. Agadoo's rubbish. Oh, oh, I hate it. Russ Abbott, atmosphere. There's no atmosphere in here with that playing. Oh. Um, <laughs> last night, thing started, the Fame Academy. And I, I've been, I'm quite a sad telly watcher, and I've been looking forward to that for about two weeks. I fell for the hype. I can't believe it. I love Pop Idol. I love Pop uh, Stars the Rival. I love Celebrity Fit Club. I, I, I love all those things, right? Um, but um, just disappointing because they'd already picked them. I think it's it's investment, and uh, I'll be honest. I think the, the standard was poor. The standard was poor. I think so. I and are these people with different uh, abilities, or is it all singing? It's just all singing. It, it's it's rather like 
it's rather like they've got us down to the last twelve of Pop Idol, say. It's like that, you yeah. come in at that level. But, but, but to be fair to the programme, I think it's all about what happens next, because like, now they get voted out like Big Brother. Right. Um, and, and so- do they, do they write their own material and stuff, or They'll be just taught to do that, they've got the whole team together and everything, so then they're, 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 um, filmed you know, like, the 24 hours a day and everything. And so, uh, I think you've got to get into it and get to know these people. There's always a few, there's already a few I go, right, she's annoying. Yeah. Right, vote her out. And they have to, there's three that the, the, the teachers say each week, okay, you're up pro on probation. And then you, you vote them out and it gets, to, it gets it down to one person. But the interesting thing is, um, it's not just they get a record and they release a single, they live the life for a year. Right. So they get this beautiful sort of pad in Notting Hill Gate. They get a sports car. Right. right. And it says they get to go to parties. They're already set up to go to the FA Cup final, uh, the Brits and all those things. Dinner parties with yeah, about it. <laughs> yeah. Meet all these people and then after a year it's taken away from them. Wow. They just take everything back. And you don't like this because you feel it cheapens, like, your celebrity lifestyle, which you've worked for. <laughs> no, but, but, um, the other thing is, uh, of course, they could be big stars by then and uh, they just have to get their own car. But, uh, how do they, what, that psychologically is gonna be grim. But are, are we gonna follow it up for that year? Are we gonna, is it like- Well that's when it becomes interesting. I mean now, camera crews following hearsay, now that's interesting. Yeah I know, and that what no, Jay did what next, yeah, exactly. like when they actually, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. but I, I don't know how they're gonna do it. Do you, how long, Jane, uh, Jane, why do I call you Jane? There's so many, the name Jane's been mentioned so many times. You can call me whatever you like, um, Steve. Uh, love. <laughs> <laughs> well, how long do you reckon Ricky would last in the Big Brother house? <laughs> <laughs> if he was in Celebrity Big Brother, how long would Ricky stay in there? <laughs> well, you see, as a- Well, it depends, you oh, see. Go no, on, you answer. No, because as someone who was be, would be watching Big Brother if Ricky was in there, I would make sure that he stayed in right till the end, just for of comedy course. value. Well, of course, because you know he's irritating, he's a sort of- So I'm Chris but Eubank, You're the Chris Eubank of the house, but right. obviously a lot of people tend to vote out the most irritating, annoying, most loathsome person. Well, they want away. to get rid of me, but the public presumably yeah, the might public want me in there. As, as a sort of you know, irritant. I, I think the public would turn against you as well. <laughs> 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 I know you, Rick. Um, right, well that's it. expose it. you for the charlatan you are. Go uh, on. Uh, we haven't played a song for the ladies for Go some on. weeks, because yeah. I just keep forgetting to bring I one in. I need one, I need one. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I, uh, I thought, you know, I haven't played Tom Waits for a while, and this is, you know, one of his classics, and it's just beautiful, beautiful tune, and, and however many times you've hear heard it, it's still brilliant. Downtown train, Rick. Oh, I can't believe it. Uh, we're That's back it. next week, and Carl hopefully is back with Carl, I think, will be, yeah. Um, well, we don't know, but- Let's um, hope everything's I'm okay, sure, I'm, I'm sure it is, and, uh, we'll see him next week. Thanks, Jay. Goodbye, everybody.